Welcome to the wow, 16th episode of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose, or it's Seth Rokage. Um, before we go and start, just want to go and remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe on all the socials. That includes YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. Uh, everyone's ads are on screens as well as available in the descriptions. Uh, Game Session Podcast is streamed here live on Sundays, um, 6.30 p.m. PST, later available on podcast services and YouTube, as well as uh, individual cut-up segments on YouTube for easier digestion. Uh, today we have with us Sarah. Hello. Corey. Hi, I'm fixing my lighting. And we are joined <laughs> once again by uh, by Sylvia. How Hi. you doing? Do you like my eyebrows in this picture? They look pretty cool. Yes. I, I struggled to think of an eyebrow pun. You're going to have to give me a second. Hi, I got you. I got you <laughs> in my web of non-ability to make puns. Um, I guess I guess before we start, I just I just want to vent for a second, or or I guess this is the first podcast we've had with with my short hair, which whatever. Perfect. I got That's a haircut fine. too. But you're old. Both of you look so Corey. pretty. Ah, oh, you stop. <laughs> <laughs> stop, stop, go on, but, but, but please stop. Yeah, please continue. Yes. <laughs> um, shoot, what was I gonna say? Uh, so they put the trailer out for um the Falcon and Winter Soldier today. Yeah, I have yeah, why did they yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw why it. Did, I saw why it. Did, why did they cut my boy Bucky's hair? What? Why you, did you cut your you hair? Deserve that. That's, Bucky is my sole animal, and well, so I was relying on him well, to carry on the torch. Like I just got done watching Winter Soldier in uh, Civil War over the last couple days, and so to go from that to this, I'm just like that. That no, I I don't like. Well, think about it like this: He probably cut his hair for the whatever reason you cut your hair. I know, and that's what's sad. <laughs> it's time for a change. It's a yeah. new phase of Marvel. Uh, <laughs> everyone should watch WandaVision. I have very spoilery Please thoughts. Do. I want to so get into it. So good. Uh, it's so good. So I I My just, thoughts may not be as good as yours, though. <laughs> I, I Wait, is everybody say, is everybody in this chat caught up to WandaVision? I am. Uh, yeah. I don't know I if am. I'm on stream, but I am. I am. I am. Okay, okay I... I, I'm going to try to avoid... I, I will avoid spoiling this. Um, uh, let's, good just, luck. <laughs> let's just say... So, my, my girlfriend, Des, is a very avid superhero movie fan. So, I told her, like, oh, have you seen any of the other non- uh, MCU Marvel movies. She's like, oh no, I'm like, oh, come on, there's there's like some very particular standout ones that you should watch because, you know, there's, there's Logan, there's Days of Future Past, and I'm not going to say anything, but you should watch those movies. You should check out uh, some of those movies. Maybe yeah. check out Sam Raimi's Spider-Man films. Yes. <laughs> what? Year? Wait, which ones or were maybe those? Maybe check out Blade. Well, you Sam don't know. Sam Raimi's are the first trilogy. Oh, the first trilogy. Okay. The Toby yeah, one. The, the one, the one where that like dance came came from. Do you know the like Spider-Man yeah. dance? <laughs> the the, the, the Spider-Man Three from. one, where he gets yeah. the black hair and he gets really mean. I rewatched those less than a year ago. And uh, yeah, the first one's great. First one's great. <laughs> Second I, I one is very fun, mm-hmm. but it's very bad. It's, like, it's every, definitely... Everyone wants to talk about the dance that he does when he has like the suit and the black hair. But my absolute favorite one is I think it's when he's fighting Harry and he's like, he looks down at him with his like weird, like goth haircut. <laughs> and he goes, oh, gonna cry. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> I haven't seen three in years. I've I've gone back to watch one and two, but it's definitely like a pre MCU era. It has like its own pacing, its own sense of humor to it. Three is one of those movies that like if you watch it as an adult and like don't go into it thinking it's going to be like a more serious superhero film and just look at it as like a comedy. It's really good. It's really funny. I might just have to go do that after we're done. It's uh, I think it's worth it. Times. I, I, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I, I know we're in the pandemic and everything, but I used to go to the movie theater like every like, if not every week, every other week just to see what's new because it's an easy way to keep up with entertainment and whatnot. And so I, I've just been binge watching Marvel movies on uh, <laughs> Disney Plus. I'm just like, damn, I really fucking miss going to the movies yeah. so bad. That sucks. But uh, dude, I literally like same because um me and Ish would make it like we always we had kind of a ritual of of literally like uh, I don't think every single time but pretty much ninety percent of the time 
we would always get a large bucket of popcorn to share and uh, and like specifically a red slurpee he hates blue wow <laughs> and he doesn't and he doesn't like coke the or no he does like coke flavored i think or maybe i don't know coke flavored slurpees are nasty yeah but he loves the red he's okay with blue and red to put together um i i once made him try the green slurpee and he hated it so never again apparently but that's our ritual and i miss it and it sucks because yeah i miss movie theater popcorn (laughs) like 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 you you can buy like popcorn from a store and it'll say like oh this is movie theater butter it's not the fucking same it's 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 definitely a unique flavor there's something special about it this is like a very specific thing but um uh Jose's probably going to know, Corey, I don't know if you've ever been to this theater. There's this theater in SF that I would go to, like, whenever something came out. And it was, there was, like, a cold, there was, like, a Cold Stone ice cream spot, like, right next to it. And if you brought your, like, ticket stub, you would get, like, a couple dollars off of your ice ice cream. And that was what me and my friends would, like, always do, was we would get out of the movies, like, right before Cold Stone closed. And we would just, like, <laughs> zoom I- I Just think like I know. Get ice cream I think uh, I think I know which spot you're talking about. Yeah, um, it's, and I I believe I've been to that same theater a few times myself. Is it like yeah, in, have, is it like inside and upstairs, like where there's an yes. escalator? Yeah, but the okay, escalator then, yeah. was always broken. Yeah, I've been to that one. Yeah, I um I I I had the membership. I canceled it because obviously they were still charging me in the middle of a pandemic, and I was like, "What's mm. happening? No one's mm-hmm. no one's going." And I would get like a free ticket every month. So I would just pay the like I IMAX surcharge, which is like only like five five bucks. So I would basically go see shit free. Yes. <laughs> I would just be like How how does everyone feel about video games? You know, video I mean, games they're are thing. pretty cool. I, I would agree. I think they are indeed quite cool. Um so Nexus, you wanted to come on to the or I, I guess first you supplied some notes for the yeah. uh, Final Fantasy XIV announcements, but I, I think um, I don't think anyone on this show actively plays it, so we're, we're a little bit out of our out of our yeah. water in terms of I, talking about it. So I'm more than happy to have you on here to to, to go absolutely. off on it. Absolutely, I started playing it a while back, um, and I did I did for what I did play, uh, I played like a just kind of like a couple of the beginning Mm -hmm. missions and stuff like that um it's just the problem was i didn't really have anybody else to play with yeah so i as much as i really want to get into like an open world rpg game i have to have like a few people or like a group who i know we're like going to actively be playing that's Mm -hmm. one of the things with 14 and it's something that they've actually tried to help a little bit with some more re- recent patches so the early game stuff is like a lot of that early game is really boring and if you don't have a buddy with you it, it can be a bit of a bit of a challenge to get through let's see so in terms of announcements um can you go ahead and break down everything so, that came out uh traditionally uh final fantasy 14 has their fan festivals which they do uh bi-yearly whenever they are going to announce a new expansion and it's essentially like their blizzcon equivalent They'll do uh, one in America, one in Japan, and one somewhere in Europe. It kind of bounces around. Uh, They did one in, like, Paris and one in, like, Frankfurt and stuff. Uh, But obviously that got canceled because of COVID. So what they're doing this time around is they're doing uh, this big announcement stream that they did on, like, a big stage. And Yoshi P got on stage and, like, walked around as if he was at a panel and then would squint at some monitors that had a Twitch chat room up. Uh, (laughs) And then... um, (laughs) <laughs> Later in May, they're going to be doing a like, digital fan fest that they haven't really talked about uh, how that's going to work, and they're going to reveal some more information. But uh, the big thing that came out of this is the next expansion to Final Fantasy XIV, which is titled Endwalker. And this is a very big expansion for XIV because this represents the ending of the main story of Final Fantasy XIV. So uh, has there kind of been like an overarching plot or, yeah. or villain? So every expansion is sort of its own unique chapter to the story, but they all have an overarching plot that's connecting all of them and uh, a, a main story that's continuing between all the different expansions and all this, all the game. But officially in this expansion, it is that story is going to meet its end. And then in the patch after that, it's going to be something new. 
Uh, normally, what will happen is an expansion comes out. So like 5.0 is Shadowbringers, right? That's the next big story. And then 5.1 is, you know, that story's done, but let's tie up some loose ends here. And then 5.2 is, well, now we need to, now we need to deal with what these loose ends did and we need to do a finale. And then 5.3 is that finale that really like closes out that chapter of the story. And then uh, you have your like 0.4 and 0.5 lead into the next expansion. This is going to be different and that 6.0, this expansion is going to drop and that's going to be the end of this story. And 6.1 forward is going to be something new. So kind of like a new saga overall? Yeah. Okay. Kind of a new saga, a new chapter. It's almost like this is, if, if this is the MCU, this is Endgame, right? This is mm -hmm. everyone's banding together to get the Infinity Stones and go fight Thanos. I, uh, I, I, I love this will. analogy. The one thing I will say is, I don't know if it was you that posted it on my Twitter timeline, but someone posted a video from, I think, a fan fest from a couple of years ago when he was on stage like and, and he like asked fans, yeah. like, where do you guys want to see the next expansion go? And someone in the audience goes, the moon. So and like he just kind of just laughs and like the so moon. Let's well, talk about maybe the, the next moon. couple expansions. Uh, <laughs> so the moon there were two moons originally in 1.0 and the second moon became a big thing because it was actually a giant egg that had Bahamut in it and Bahamut like destroyed half the world. And then that's what Bahamut was the board, moon? Right? He was, he was <laughs> sleeping in there. It was, a, it was like an egg, but uh, people have been saying that we're going to go to the moon someday since heaven's word, which is the second expansion. And Yoshi P has always jokingly said like, yeah, someday we'll probably go fight the final boss of the game on the moon. And this expansion, we're literally going to go fight the final boss on the moon. <laughs> like, on the moon. we're going to go kill probably both gods on the moon. Is it even a JRPG really if you don't fight God? Yeah, it's true. Uh, so we're, we're getting wait, some new how scenarios. Do you breathe on um, the moon? What was that? How do you breathe on the moon? This is probably a know, dumb Final Fantasy something. thing. How do you how, how do you, you take your mount out and uh, and and fly your mount around underwater when it's something that can't breathe underwater? Yoshi P just says it's it's magic. Anime it's, defies the laws of physics. Short, short answer: um, magic. <laughs> so there's a lot of areas that I kind of really can't Nano get into because they're all big spoilers and they obviously lack a lot of context. But one of the big ones that they tease in the big cinematic trailer is. We are going to the moon. The moon is going to be where the end game happens and where like the finale of this story takes place, which is a big deal in the story. Uh, we're also with every expansion, the level in, the level gets increased. So now we're going to be going to 90, but the stats are going to get squished a little bit because Yoshi P was talking about how people were doing so much damage and bosses had so much health that it was causing massive bugs to the game. Uh, so, for example, as Samurai, which is the class I play, you can do about 200,000 damage twice in a row on a crit, and that is enough to kill some of the like level 50 bosses in two hits. Oh, wow. So it's the the gear and the levels became a bit of a problem, and it introduced a lot of glitches uh, that were doing actual damage to the server, so this was a needed thing. It's something a lot of MMOs That's do. That's interesting that it was... That's interesting that it's doing like damage in that regard because I know WoW did something yeah. comparable with the uh, level and stats squish, yeah. but that was that was more so for um, so, for simplicity. So sake it's also just bugs. a legendary yeah, thing because wow. like eventually yeah. a number gets so big it's hard it, it just, to quantify it. Yeah, yeah. It mean wow, after wow point. basically yeah. did it because stuff got too big yeah. and a lot of players complained. They're like, "This is a lot of numbers. Yeah. Like you already have to deal with it a lot of numbers." It is exciting and, like, seeing two hundred thousand damage on screen, yeah. but. Uh, it's a bit overwhelming at times. Bigger the number, the bigger the dopamine. It's true. It's true. That's why I play the job that does the biggest numbers. Me like big number. Uh, speaking of jobs, uh, we are getting two new ones with this expansion. Uh, the first one is a new healer called the Sage. We haven't gotten a healer in a really long time. And this one is really cool. It uh, gives like shields to its party members. And this healer has a weird weapon. Uh, if you're familiar with Gundam, they have these like little funnels that they like send to fly around and like shoot lasers and and like give uh give people shields. It's really it's really similar to uh, a Gundam called the New Gundam, which is something that uh it's it, that's one that Yoshi P really likes. Uh, so you can tell that he's he's giving the New Gundam a lot of love with this job. And the second one is a melee DPS that we know is going to have some kind of dark Reaper skeleton aesthetic because what Yoshi P likes to do is um. 
when he wants to tease a new thing, he goes to an announcement wearing a special T-shirt that's supposed to be a reference. So yeah, and what, um, and like was he wearing a children of a, a fucking children of Bodom T-shirt? Yeah, and it has, uh, uh, has that one which had a grim reaper on it, children and then of um Bodom shirt. Uh, You're gonna then, make uh, me sad. On another stream, he had a he had like a skeleton like like reaper on it. Uh, some previous ones he did um, when they were gonna reveal Machinist, which is a job of a gun. He had like a James Bond T-shirt or. Uh, when they were going to do Dark Knight, he had a Batman t-shirt. Uh, oh the most gosh. obnoxious one he's ever done is he wore a Spider-Man t-shirt. And people were like, oh, it's it's going to be <laughs> Samurai because Sam Raimi directed the oh Spider-Man God. films. And if you pronounce that like like how a Japanese person with their phonetics would pronounce it, it's Samu Raimi, Samurai. And... People were like, no way, that's ridiculous. And Yoshi P was like, yeah, I can't believe people got that it was supposed to be Samurai me Samurai. <laughs> and that's what he actually meant by it. Oh my God. It's beautiful. Yeah. Um, so with a lot of 14, they do a lot of references to previous games. Uh, and this is having a lot of Final Fantasy IV vibes. Uh, the last expansion, we were a Dark Knight and we are turning into a Paladin. That's the like, kind of main character they show in the trailer. Uh, he was represented by a Dark Knight before and now he's a Paladin. Uh, we're going around with our dragoon friend to the moon, and we're going to get a new lunar whale mount, which can seat eight people in it, uh, which is very exciting. Where do you sit on the lunar whale? Is, is it like a uh, saddle on the back, or do you, is it like, like Pinocchio? You literally go inside of it. Choo-choo into weird. the whale bus. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Uh, big news get in the whale that bus. no one who doesn't play this game will understand. Uh, they are removing belts from the game. Tetsuya uh, Nomura screams in the distance. So, so he still has zippers. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so previously belts were an accessory and it was the only equipable item that would not actually appear on your character and existed solely for stats. Uh, and so they made the decision to remove belts and then use the inventory slots that would have had for belts to go towards other stuff because inventory is kind of a problem in 14. Uh, and hopefully this will solve a bit of that issue. But I gotta say, it is very funny to see people go like, why are all these Final Fantasy fans so excited they're taking belts away? <laughs> uh, and then, last couple things. We're getting this weird, uh, like, Farmville thing called Island Sanctuary, where you get to start a farm and your mounts and minions get to roam around and have fun on your farm. Uh, they didn't say too much about it, but it looks pretty fun. Uh, another big reference to another Final Fantasy game is um, Yoshi P was talking about how the creature designer for 14 actually worked on Final Fantasy 10. And so one of the new bosses for the expansion is going to be Anima from Final Fantasy 10, which is one of the coolest looking summons from that game. And I'm very excited to see how that's going to work. Slight tangent. Uh, is 10 still worth playing? Oh, 10 is... Like, it's a toss-up between if 10 or 7 is my favorite. 10 has the best world building in the entire series. I, I think, like, I have some, like, weird childhood resentment towards 10 because yeah. uh, I had two separate discs for it that I had borrowed from my cousin, and they were both glitch at the exact same point, Yeah, which is, like, three hours in, you wind up on the, uh, on the beach where Waka, like, tosses his fucking weapon of mass destruction otherwise known as a fucking volleyball at you and you're yeah. supposed to like just go up to the beach uh both discs were apparently fucked up in the same exact spot because i could not go towards the beach so i just couldn't resume the game like oh fuck there's three hours of my of my life just you know, gone that actually happened with my final fantasy 10 2 disc and it ruined my ps2's disc reader oh shit i couldn't play ps2 at all and i never played 10 2 i'm gonna play it for the first time soon uh, but the I'm most actually, I know about Final Fantasy 10 uh, is I'm actually going to start streaming 10. Uh, I'm going to stream 10 and 4 for people who might be interested in some of the references in 14 uh, who didn't play those games. Uh, so if you're interested, you can check that out. Please tell me that there's going to be an emote or, or dance or whatever you want to call it in 14 where you just do the Titus laugh. You know, there's actually an emote that already pretty much looks like it. Oh, nice. Yeah. Okay, uh, so I so I have to bring this up really quick because we know that the same team who's doing fourteen is working on Final Fantasy sixteen as well. They're the hmm. same team that's doing it. M my guess yeah. is 
how far along is 16 that they so, feel comfortable releasing this huge big expansion in the next couple of I can actually months. give a lot more details to that because that's something Ooh, I've been following do. for a really long time. So around when Heaven's Word came out, Heaven's Word released and then a bunch of people all at once left the 14 team, right? And they I think I remember a that. secret project. And at this Which point, we, now know we can 16. be clear that that secret project is 16. <laughs> uh, Yoshi P is producing 16, but he's not directing it. And uh, a lot of the people that are working on 16 are mostly 14 vets. And then it appears that some 14 people, when they're not working on 14, like they don't have things to do, are pitching in on 16, it looks like. Okay, so it's getting done but faster than we separate. thought it was. Oh, yeah. 16 has been <laughs> in development for uh, probably about five years. When Yoshi P says that games come out in 2021, I actually believe him. Uh, yeah, because I was because I was interested, likely. especially with how much that they announced during the event, and I was thinking to myself, the same team yeah. is doing six, 16. How far along is 16 yeah. that they feel comfortable throwing more people on 14's expansion yeah. so we that it will, releases this year? Out of curiosity, probably, um, I'm sorry, go ahead, Corey. We, Oh, we will probably get a release date for 16, my guess, by E3. Yeah. Um, 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 a qu question out of curiosity. Do you, does anyone here know um, the development team behind Final Fantasy 15, whether it's the key players or whatnot? What previous games did they work on? Uh, as far as the team, I don't know specifics. As far as, um, uh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I used to be able to remember his name off the top of my head. Who's the developer of that game? Who's the director mm -hmm. of that game, rather? Um, I, I know Nomura worked on half of it. Uh, Nomura Tabata. Tabata did... Um, oh gosh, now I said that. I remember that part, and I forgot the things that he made before this. He made... Uh, oh yeah, he made Type-0, uh, which was originally Agito. He did Kingdom Hearts Coded, Crisis Core... Uh, Christ, uh, Final Fantasy 7, Last Order, and like uh, a couple other stuff. Because I oh, think I'm, I'm and just... he did the third birthday. Oh uh, no! Oh. I, I mainly asked just because. Um, so I, I don't actively play 14, but just everything I've heard about it's just completely phenomenal. Yeah. And so the fact that they're working on 16 uh, is just gonna is just making me incredibly yeah. excited for 16. Um, really I did not care for 15 in the slightest regard, so I'm glad yeah. <laughs> it's not oh, that team on it. Uh, that, that's a discussion for another is, time. Uh, definitely looking like it's going to be the minds who made 14 with the gameplay of like Devil May Cry, which is pretty Well, exciting. yeah, because the combat director yeah. who did DMC5's combat is doing that, which to me is what honestly has me the most excited about yeah. it, because I've never been a fan of uh, of like medieval final fantasy like the sort of medieval -y final fantasies i've never been a fan of yeah. those i've always yeah. been a fan of the more like futuristic like 13 i'm, I'm about the same uh 15 whatever king's glaive yeah. was like doing that's have you some, played that's some... final fantasy 9 the best game in the series Nine's no i haven't good. i i've never played any i the only old final fantasies i've played is the original s s seven and i think three on the ds was that on the ds three i know yes. i played one of them on the ds um but i've never been a fan of like medieval final fantasy yeah. and that's why 13 15 king's king's glaive is like my uh, and, and like seven is like my shit yeah so when they showed six 16 and it's got that mixture of what king's glaive was was doing and the medieval stuff but of the graphics of 14 or which i kind of like the graphics of 14 yeah. Uh, that's what got me excited for it. And so that's why, like, you talking about what this team is doing. Again, because again, I played maybe five hours of Final Fantasy yeah. 14, like, a couple years ago on, like, PlayStation 4 when it first launched. So I could, and I was like, okay, th this is fine, but I can't pay for two MM MMOs at yeah. the same time. It's it's tricky and, juggling two MMOs, like, content wise, yeah. too. And it's like, it's fine. And I, I will jump back in when the Sage class gets put in. Because I want to have floating swords and shoot people with healing beams, because that just sounds like my shit. Yeah. But I'm more excited to see what this team does with 16 when that come comes out, and to know that they're confident enough to be like, okay, we can have a big team working on 14's expansion again, while having a team working on 16 at the same time is what gets me like really more interested. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Something um, that's really interesting about Yoshi P as a director and the direction he's bringing 14 in for, for his time in it is that he <laughs> wants to make an MMO that doesn't necessarily become your life, right? He wants to make an MMO that you can play other games at the same time. As. So it's totally reasonable and even encouraged by the developers to like play 14, do the content, and then when you've done the new content, just unsub until new content comes out. He, he almost explicitly doesn't want you to be the kind of person that plays it all day that, if, you, if you don't want to. That speaks to me very specifically yeah. because I play entirely too many games. Like, I, I don't really have the opportunity to go back to stuff I've already played. It's just kind of like one thing after the next. Yeah. And um, I, know, I know WoW is just constantly adding new content. I'm just like, I, I can't do it. Like, I, I need yeah. to do this backlog. It, it's too much. But um, I do I guess- have one more question for you nexus and it's six and it's 16 again i'm sorry mm. do we know what yoshi p is doing on a pro- on a producer level um, like if i have you heard anything about that guess because he hasn't gone too in depth uh in like what his actual role is i imagine when there's a bit more like interviews for 16 itself we'll probably <laughs> learn a bit more about what exactly his involvement is but to my understanding a lot of it's been like putting talented people where they need to be and then also saying like hey you talented people you should make a cool medieval fantasy game because i want the next final fantasy game to be medieval fantasy please yeah that's i think that's part of the inherent issue is just the term producer can it can be that they're that they're hands-on or that they're just kind of giving general advice it's it's a wide umbrella so sometimes uh, not necessarily in this uh, situation, but sometimes like putting too much credence on like, oh, like James Gunn is producing this uh, this evil Superman kid movie. I'm just like, he probably had very little to do with that because that movie wasn't great. Yeah. And but um, I guess going back to just like the 14 announcements, did you want to go ahead and jump back on over to that? Um, I will say like one more thing to Yoshi P's like real like focus is is 14. And, and when they announced that the story was ending... The main story was ending, but things would be continuing on after it. Yoshi P clarified by saying, like, you know, I hear a lot of rumors that I'm going to be leaving the team when the next expansion comes out, and I could never leave 14. It's my life's work, and I can't imagine a world where I'm not working on it. Which I think speaks a lot to where his, like, his his loyalties toward what he wants to direct lie, you know. And also the fact that Square, like... Like Square could ask him to leave, and he would just be like, yeah. "No." <laughs> yeah, I he mean, would be he's like, "No." Square Enix said he doesn't have to. Yeah, where he's but, like, um, "I will stay right here." It kind of reminds me of Namora and uh, Kingdom Hearts. Namora's like, yeah. "I will stand right here. I will not move. I will uh, do this." And it sounds like P's the same way. Just like yeah. I will not move. I will be here. <laughs> Last few things that were announced are: uh, there's going to be cross data center travel which means uh, before you could travel in between the different, you know, servers on a data center, but now you can truly go to any other shard, any other server and play with any person that plays this game. You're not limited by data centers anymore because there were three American data centers and, you know, you could interact with the various servers that were in those data centers, but you couldn't, you know, transition between the other ones. And now you're truly going to be able to play with whoever you want to play with if they play this game, which is really cool. Nice. Uh, they're also releasing a PS5 version, and if you already own the PS4 version, uh, you get the upgrade to it for free. Uh, any license for the game that you own on PS4 will automatically be redeemable for a license for the PS5, which is really awesome. I recall that being an issue with the uh, PS3 to PS4. I believe you had to rebuy it. I which... believe you had to rebuy it after a certain point, but I think when the PS4 version launched they did a similar deal where if you had the ps3 version you could just upgrade your license uh and i think when they dropped ps3 support they did a similar thing uh but i don't recall the specifics Mm -hmm. uh also the last thing that i wanted to talk about was um yoshi also does uh and the team also do something called live letters where they do pretty regular streams about the development of the game and they talk about the actual development of the game right and kind of break things down to words and and explanations that people who might not be super familiar with game development can really like understand and grasp like how how these things work and how they come together. And they have a lot of interviews with the team and stuff. Uh, 
and your CP had to announce that unfortunately due to a lot of COVID restrictions, one of the looked forward to pieces of content in the next patch, which was the next uh, ultimate raid, which is a really difficult raid that comes out uh, twice in expansion, uh, was unfortunately going to be delayed. And he spent a lot of time explaining what the development process of those raids is like and how like, you know, unfortunately with an expansion coming out, we can't take this battle team that needs to make stuff for the expansion and put them on this because, you know, this takes a lot of work. It's such a hard fight. You know, you, you need a lot of talented people to be pitching ideas and creating assets for it. And unfortunately, we just had to delay it. And there's a couple outliers that are still upset. But for the most part, Yoshi P really has created a community of players that can hear something like that and go, you know what, realistically, it, that makes sense that this would be something you'd want to cut in service of an expansion. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Very exciting times to be a 14 player. I, I think every time I, I see like you in particular posting about it on Twitter, I'm just like, man, I really need to play 14. And like, I haven't I'll even tell finished. You what, the best time to start playing 14 is whenever you want. See, that sounds so welcoming. Cause every yeah. time I look back at Shadowlands, there's like all this new stuff coming. I'm just like, oh fuck, I'm so far. Welcome behind. to hell, literally. <laughs> if you ever want uh, people to play the game with, uh, my free company is always open to new players. Uh, so if you ever want to come in and uh, and like learn to play the game in a more casual environment with a bunch of other new people, uh, you know, you can just hit me up on Twitter and I'd be more than welcome to let you in. We're on the Ultra server on the Primal Data Center if you ever want to join. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for going and uh, breaking that down yeah, for us, course. Nexus. It's always a joy to have yeah, you. Always happy to talk about this game that I love and have played a lot of hours of. If you had to guess how many hours you've put in. Oh, I don't have to guess because it tells you. Oh no! Yeah, but I don't want to talk while, about it. Yeah, WoW <laughs> does the same thing, and it's like, and it's basically this like un unspoken word where where you don't type slash played. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's box. the it's the exact same command. <laughs> just don't do it. It's like slash you will play time. And you will, like, and you will, like, have like a mini heart attack. You'll be like, oh my god, how long have I been sitting here? <laughs> What's fucked up is sometimes it's not even me playing. Sometimes it's literally me sitting on like the lawn of my free company house or my house, and I'm just like sitting there watching Netflix with the game open. I'm not even playing. <laughs> yeah, for WoW, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, I have to cook dinner. I just won't close close the game. Yeah. And then I, I mean, I will say into the camera, I checked. I have 1,015 hours in a yeah. single character in WoW. My, and my uh, friend's like, why do you check the number? He's like, don't look at the number. And a friend I'm of mine once for five days left their PS4 on and just AFK'd in front of one of the market boards. And I would just go on every once in a while and see their character there. And I'm like, oh, yeah, still just sitting there. <laughs> nice. Oh, jeez. Right. Let's go ahead and break down some of the yeah. uh, news that happened last Hopefully week. I didn't go on too long. Oh, no, you're fine. Ah. You're fine. Uh, let's see. Uh, Google has shut down all of Stadia's in-house game development studios, leaving the fate of 150 employees in the wind, albeit Google has stated that they're going to be making efforts to transition any affected workers into other sectors within the company. Um, th this reversal of Google's previous statements of holding fast to Stadia is of little surprise to those that have followed the company's brief experimental flirtations. Um, but I think what's really egregious about this to me is that so, so Google came out and they said, like, look, we are fucking dedicated to this. We're going to put the time, money and resources because we are serious about this. So they, they poach all this talent from like other studios like so, so those studios don't have those people anymore. They came over here to come work to, to do their work and then they fucking waste it by what Stadia came out last year, right? Like, like middle of last year, maybe? I want to say, yeah, middle of last year sounds right. Yeah, I it's not so. that old. It's I yeah. tested it at GDC 2019. I was able to get hands-on with it when it was in, like, beta form. Yeah. Um, so, I believe Rem did the same thing. It's a shame he's not here. I know he beta tested an early version of it. Yeah, I uh, I played it, like, on the GDC show, show floor, and it looked like garbage then, and I figured no one believed me. And I was like, this isn't good. <laughs> it's not. But yeah, so, just just on the so front of. I'm um, sorry. Go ahead, Corey. So Ish and I actually got a chance to play it because we we got literally Google gave us a free one, and um, they're like, please, please play, <laughs> Corey. <laughs> and uh, I actually got a chance to play the Stadia um, 
the the Stadia game that was only exclusive to Stadia uh, called Guilt G Y L T, um, and it it wasn't a bad game. It was actually it was actually pretty pretty cool. I I describe it as like a a kid version of Silent Hill, um, and uh, it was pretty. It ran pretty well. It just it really does depend on your internet. Um, you know, service and like how fast your internet is. Cause there were moments that my controller would just like randomly disconnect. Um, and then there were moments where like, I just had to stop playing because it was, it be, the internet was being very slow and it was just like choppy and everything. But most of the time I'd say 90% of the time I didn't really have much of an issue. That's good. Um, I have mm-hmm. some notes here from a friend of the show, Ramen Nomad, over on Twitter. Um, so I'll just go ahead and read off some of the notes Thank that they you. went ahead and sent Thank me. You, Robin. You're the best. Uh, so, so they've had Stadia since the launch, and they um, they said they got it mainly as a Destiny Two machine to use while the TV is being hogged by uh, his uh, wife and kids. Uh, setup was easy, but immediately I uh, said that that lag was definitely an issue over Wi-Fi. So. And I, I would say that for mostly kind of any kind of streaming, unless it's just video streaming, uh, you should always use Ethernet for that kind of thing. Uh, it says it's still terrible over Wi-Fi and that they have 300 up, 20 down, which is pretty damn good. Um, the only way to get good performance is through wired connection, It's and it's a data hog. Let's see. Input lag still an issue, though it's improved a little bit since launch. I, w- I would imagine for very specific games... Um, it's much more of an issue. Like if you're yeah. trying to play a shooter, like I can't that, that's not going to be playing Samurai Showdown on Stadia. <laughs> play play Sekiro on on Stadia. Yeah. Get get that parry time. Like <laughs> Sam Show. That's a game that requires some very precise inputs, and especially if you're playing it online with other people. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I will say when I tested it at GDC, I was talking to someone who was working for Google. Like she was watching me play it. And I brought it up. I was like, how are you guys running this? So obviously, it was at a convention center. There was like a shit ton of other things going. And she had explained to me that they were hot fixing the Wi-Fi over from Google's San Francisco like offices to the convention center. So she is like, oh, there might be a tiny bit of lag and there might be a little bit of like uh, input lag. And I was like, okay, okay. And then she even brought up to me, I think she, if I remember, she said, oh, we're like recommending if people use it, we're recommending they use a wired connection. And then when it started coming out that that people were only getting good connections that were using like Google Fiber, like I was, I just was like, ah, that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> For someone um, who played it over Wi-Fi too, it's, it, was, it looked bad. Like it just looked really bad. Let's see. And uh, Roman uh, Roman Nomad goes on to continue that the controller apparently connects through Wi-Fi as, a, as opposed to just going to the Chromecast over what? Bluetooth, that's which is we- that, that's like an unnecessary step. Why? It, it's adding another layer of of input lag. Why would you? Yeah, do it that? was. I will say that much. Connecting, f- figuring out how to connect the controller was even though we had the steps in front of us. Mm we were struggling with it like it was is so it like one of those jokes where it's like how many people does it take to get the controller literally <laughs> and and it, and uh and literally what it was is that um you have to like put a code into the controller and um oh, that, the fuck? that is yeah, so it's overly screen. complicated what? It's, it's, it's on the screen um when you have the google the uh, what's it called the the chromecast plugged in and it says type in this this uh yeah. four combination button code from your controller to connect your controller oh, and so it turns weird. on stadia That's it's so weird yeah have it's they, so weird have they heard so, of the sacred method of either hit the sync button or plug in a usb yeah yeah <laughs> nope uh, nothing like that that doesn't exist <laughs> so can you not use other controllers with stadia or are you locked to that one no, I swear you can use like Xbox and PlayStation controllers. Can you use an Ouya controller? Oh God! <laughs> no, I heard that name in ages. Jesus, that was saying. actually speaking of Ouya controller. That's my second guess. Is like, is the controller good to hold? I heard it wasn't that great to hold. I've heard it's adequate, but you'd probably know more, Corey. Um. Yeah. I, I mean, I haven't tried that at all. I haven't tried using a separate controller at all. Um, and sorry if I'm being a little quiet. It's just uh, it's just currently doing um, 
important document things. Oh, um, so, <laughs> to be anyways. fair, this is, this is quite an important AS, document. ASMR thing. Oh, this is yeah, yeah. this is the ASMR cast. <laughs> yeah, where we have Corey as our as our as our as our as our as our as are we going to continue um, talking about Stadia in this, in this very soft and calming voice? Should I get like some some like props that I can rub? T- I have some coins. Yes. Oh, Ooh, that sounds nice. <laughs> Here, let me click on my <laughs> controller. Hold on, hold on. Let's can, let me see if you can hear this. Hold on, hold on. I don't know why I'm waving it around that. my microphone like it's my <laughs> neuron. I'm petting my hedgehog. Anyway, go ahead, Corey. Oh my God. <laughs> So um, I haven't I haven't actually tried uh, hook, hooking up another controller to the Stadia, so I wouldn't really know that. But I know there is a way to do it. But I wasn't even going to try because it, it was hard enough to hook up the actual Stadia controller to the Google, uh, let alone a separate controller. So mm-hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, Roman Nomad is talking about some of the pricing stuff. It says uh, on the games front, if you stayed subscribed, they actually give you a lot of free games. Uh, Sixty six. 66 to date with at least two a month since launch they also have a lot of deals but nothing that stands out the deals are usually decent but nothing approaching steam sale levels of discounts so that's good to hear especially since the pricing at um at launch was pretty fucked up so you, you would have to like pay for the game and then i believe there's like an additional service in order to get like 4k 60 God. otherwise you'd get like 1080 or, or sub um, but they, but they say overall it, when it works, it's fine. You can't, dis- and you can't distinguish between console and stadia but when it doesn't work or lags out. You get the feeling that you've wasted your money and time, especially if you already have a console or PC. And I, I, th- I think like my common, uh, go back for stadia or I guess like streaming services, um, video game streaming services in general is that they're great options mm. for people that don't have access to those consoles. But if it's going to be more of a pain in the ass or just exactly. as expensive as those means, then why even bother? Yeah, plus it's the whole thing of imagine like you can't afford a console, but you can get Stadia. So you get Stadia, get like Destiny 2, and then you go to play it only to find out that your Wi-Fi can't handle it. Exactly. Yeah. It's sort of like the opposite of what Nintendo's doing with their uh, oh, with them streaming like big games on the yeah. Switch. Like what what control did was you could you can't even buy control unless you play the demo of the game, which is the first like 30 or 40 minutes. And you can only buy the game if your Wi-Fi can like handle it mm-hmm. like they, they are specifically doing that to make sure that your Wi-Fi can handle the game. So they don't get a fuck butt ton of people in, like trying to get refunds because they find out that their Wi-Fi can't handle it like i feel like stadia is like the complete opposite of that it's like oh throw your money to yeah. the to the wind unless in Corey's case google just like begs you at your front door to please take the stadia off of our hands you know, stadia, yeah i don't know how so, that happened <laughs> is like something that was just a couple years too early like maybe when we were, were playing with ps6s and xbox whatever they want to call the next one uh xbox the one or something xbox one series <laughs> xbox, xbox one x series one. x s xbox uh, you know, whenever we're playing around with those and we maybe uh, hypothetically, if America can ever get their shit together with Internet uh, uh, infrastructure, you know, maybe the stadia could actually be a real like contender with those. But I think I mean, just right now, like if you live in the country, if you live like in Alabama and don't have good Internet like this is this. It's useless to you. Mm-hmm. You know, I know us for at least we're in the we're in the Bay Area, so we have yeah. access to fiber and whatnot. I know I have. Uh, 500 Fiber down. is real specific though. Like you need to have a specific setup yeah. for them to be able to like plug it in. Mm-hmm. So, like I I have good old Comcast, man. Like I'm running out of Comcast. But... Sponsored by Comcast. Right, Comcast. Please give me free yeah. internet. I mean, you hear my buddy Jamie <laughs> living out in like countryside Australia. It took him like 14 hours to install Battlefront 2. You know, oh, shit. he's not going to be able to play. Yeah. I remember on Stadia. I remember back when I had like a shitty laptop trying to download Team Fortress 2. It would take me like I should, you know, like an hour to get into a yeah. single match just to download whatever assets they had. It, it was it was a bad time. 
Yeah, my uh, my World of Warcraft partner is in is in the middle of nowhere Australia. So mm. whenever like a new WoW expansion comes out, he has to start downloading it, then go to bed and hope by the time he's woken up, it's done. While like for me, it takes like thirty minutes at the most, and I'll be like all set, all good, ready to ready to go. Nice. Yeah, so, yeah. I think I think my uh, I think my eighteen or nineteen year old self is like. <laughs> would would absolutely uh shit his pants if he knew the battle station that i have now yeah because uh those laptop gaming days man they were yeah. uh excuse you <laughs> they were coming to the person using a gaming laptop to do this <laughs> yes i mean like, gaming now, laptops are now fine. they're a lot better now it gaming laps, right. like, <laughs> i'm talking about back when i was like 19 i had like an hp laptop and i would game off of that and, oh like, hot damn yeah you were so. you were you were running deep I was running deep, and then I figure, and then I found out when um, what was it when the first Amnesia game came out? I did a, so much research research that I figured out what OpenGL even meant for games, and that I had an Intel graphics card and I couldn't run that. So I was like, oh, "This no. is bull crap." <laughs> um, before we move on, just uh, I guess two two important notes. Uh, thank you, Ramen Nomad, for going and shooting me over those notes. Um, that was incredibly helpful. And uh, two, uh, gaming laptops are the Andrew Garfield of Spider-Man. Um, anyway, moving on to uh, next news story. Uh, Warner Brothers has finally uh, patented the, ne- the Nemesis system found within the publisher-owned Monolith Entertainment's Middle-Earth Shadow of Mordor games. The patent covers the developer's standout feature, which is known for procedurally generating hostile enemies in relations to the player based on the interactions with them. So, for instance, if you run away from an enemy encounter, that that Uruk or Orc, I forget what they're called in the game. I think it's Uruk. They'll remember your specific interactions with them and they'll adapt to it. They'll they'll specifically call you out with dialogue. You can wound one. They'll come back with a scar exactly where you landed the last blow, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, they, they managed to patent that and they've been trying to do that for the last, uh, six years since 2015. Um, but they've been shot down every single time since then, but now they have it. And I think that this is kind of a really shitty thing to do because one, no other games have like really, uh, emulated so far. I think like the closest you could say is the mercenary system and Assassin's Creed Odyssey, but that's not procedural in the sense that they have these kind of like specific relations but this just like very directly stifles innovation within the gaming sphere because that that, that's that's the entirety of the games industry is taking little ideas from every from every other place and coalescing them together improving them um like you can look at something as simple as like the whole big uh people call it like arkham combat now where you had assassin's creed with like very clunky counters uh and charted try to do some of it uh batman perfected then you just see a bunch of games just have that as like default combat that's how we have like a baseline yeah. this is just how combat should work it's good it's 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 and that wouldn't have been possible the developers don't take cues from each other so this just directly says only we can have this really cool thing and i think that's kind of shitty yeah any uh any thoughts for the for the crew well, yeah because like because like i can see where they're going with it because they want people to associate that that battle system with their games and their companies um or their company they they don't want they don't want to share it because or they don't want to share their shiny new toy with anyone else because um they, they basically want all the marketing for it they want all of the praise for it um and yeah that is shitty but uh you know that's <laughs> that's just warner brothers it, gonna warner brother yeah, yeah i don't that's exactly i've it. never been into those games so i don't have much to say about it i just think it's absolutely dumb basically for all the reasons that you just said because it's all about it in a innovation and it's all about building upon other things to make other things better and if they're just going to go and like patent some something it's kind of like with a i can't remember if they were able to do this or not but it was kind of like with a blooper team trying to patent the whole like dual screen system in from from the medium did they try to patent that yes they did i don't know if they got it or not i would have to double check but they but they tried to uh, patent it 
when it's like uh, other games have done this before you. It's not just you who is like, we have this grand idea. Like, no, it's not just you. Like, other games have done this. And I feel like... Damn, they're like, ripping off Mario and Luigi on the DS yeah, and they're trying to patent yeah. that shit? Yeah. It's... I feel like what Corey said, too, the whole idea of like, oh, like, they just want to own it to have all the clout when that's mm-hmm. honestly all that I'm seeing too, is that they're uh, like, oh, we exactly, created yeah. this. This is our thing. When it's like, no, we need to build on your thing to make other things it's better. The, it's, it, it then becomes, it then becomes all about, all about clout, like Sarah put it. Um, and, and less about actually innovating the gaming industry. It's like, it's like you can take that you can take things far, but it's like at what point do you stop and say, you know what, I'm being or this whole board member, all of these board members are being selfish, greedy assholes. Maybe yeah. we should uh, think about what we're doing and and uh, let other game companies use it because it would overall make video games in general better. Exactly, and, and make think, I- everybody else more money. So it's just like mm-hmm. I don't. I don't know. It's like, it, it's a bit weird to happen in um, to happen for these games in particular because it's absolutely the best part of those games. I don't think overall they're like that fantastic. Um, but you look at Shadow of Mortar and it's, it's straight up Batman fused with Assassin's Creed. It has a stealth of Assassin's Creed, which um, as, as clunky as some of those early Assassin's Creed games were, they did help formulate what Arkham Asylum shaped up to be and then polished mm-hmm. from there became um as as smooth as, as later assassin's creed and arkham games became so like your game is like as derivative as it comes and then you're going to stifle this on this front it's it's pretty I, gross i wanted to add something because somebody just uh said in the chat paradise is lands just said in the chat patenting game mechanics is why we have no fun mini games during no, uh loading exactly, screens yeah. bandai made it so there was no innovation, so there's nothing to go off of now. Well, Bandai can stick their foot in their mouth now because guess what? Loading screens are becoming irrelevant with how uh, with faster <laughs> systems. They don't exist and anymore. They don't I, exist anymore. I think you cover on another show like, oh yeah, this patent expired. That's cool. Now we can't do it. Fuck. Yeah, so really like, when oops. the patent expired, it's really... <laughs> <laughs> air quotes unfortunate because it's hard to say it's unfortunate when it's, it's like loading oh, yeah, screens loading screens don't exist anymore. yeah they're becoming they irrelevant and the problem with with the patent that that um warner brothers did is that combat systems are never going to become irrelevant and it's like you created this unique combat system that uh, that many gamers would love to see in different games not just warner brother ips like but you robbed everybody of that i think know. they need to release they need to release the uh, snyder cut of this patent no no <laughs> not utter those cursed words on this show i will not allow it oh, i am the co-host and i will say fuck it no one's mentioning the s c y words ever again no we're done we're, we're done no no <laughs> no that's right across the line line has been crossed do not mention that shit here we don't if you mention them they will come so don't mention them <laughs> just uh, don't do it i'm sorry i hate that with the needed passion just don't don't i'm out nope wait, without going too far into that are you I'm, oh. I'm gonna give two options you only have to say the letter option a are you opposed to snyder having a second run oh of it God. or are you opposed to the fan the the toxic fandom behind it oh. so a or b both, Both. <laughs> not even a or b a and b his dawn of the dead was actually pretty good more I will say b that. than a because i don't hate him as a person because i actually respect obviously you haven't seen extent. sucker punch i res- oh i have <laughs> i respect him as a person to an extent of what happened during justice league and why he chose to walk away from it i respect him as a person to that regard which is saying a lot like i don't like respect him that much but i respect him in that regard but like everything else no (laughs) sorry that was a terrible tangent but i i will say i I think it's just important in like any critical discourse of like any of covering like any kind of entertainment medium even the most and i'm not this isn't specifically for snyder i don't want to speak for everyone but even the most mediocre 
of of creatives within a space are still incredibly fucking talented and like there's no way you can just pull a schmuck off the street and even have half the product that yeah. they create. No, you know, we we both it's all in it's all in relativity. We know this. Like yeah. we 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 both went to film school. We know this. This shit's hard. <laughs> this yeah. shit's not easy. Like so I mean yeah like anybody who can get a movie published, put in theaters, put in people's houses, good for you. Anyone who can get a second shot at doing that better for you oh, just yeah. the way that it went about happening is what i cannot stand <laughs> can say oh, excuse me like, like the any, way it went about happening yeah say any bad thing about any game or any movie but at the end of the day the fact that a game that even exists or a movie even exists is a yeah. little miracle what 100 percent. sorry we're done on this topic now <laughs> we're good <laughs> Um, Electronic Arts has revealed as part of its uh, quarter three 2021 financial results that the next installment in the Battlefield franchise is on track to be released during this holiday season. Uh, EA commented on the nature of the title is an all out military warfare, which points to the mainline franchise's first return to a modern setting since uh, 2013's Battlefield 4. Uh, some other information come out of the financial reports are, includes that 62% of EA sales have come from digital storefronts, so it's uh, eclipsing the traditional um, uh, physical media. And Apex Legends has increased in 30% in player growth. Um, I, I guess at least for the Battlefield par- portion of this, um, I haven't actively played it since... Me neither. <laughs> ever? <laughs> I've never played a Battlefield game. I... I- I think the spectacle of it and changing classes on the fly is cool, but I just kind of naturally steer towards, I guess, tighter multiplayer experiences where big number doesn't necessarily mean better. Yeah, you can, you I can mean, get more tactical options yeah, versus sure. a fucking shit show if there's I like a hundred people. One of my first favorite convention, like comic book convention memories, was at a Chicago comic book convention that ea randomly brought like the first like public scene demo of that was a battlefield 3 it was it was like one of the modern ones and we and i got to go in and see see like a dice developer play battlefield 3 i don't think i was old enough to even see it but they let me in anyway so i was able to watch them play like an early demo that had some of the game's first early like world destruction systems in it Mm. So, like, they were, like, showing off, like, watch as we throw this grenade and this half of this building explodes. Like, it was, like, this crazy, like, mind-blowing tech. And um, I never played a Battlefield after that. They, they just never fully excited me. And I think it's mm. just because the time periods that, that they've been set in have never really interested me a whole lot. So, but I'm jokingly, like, watch this be, like, Hardline 2 or yeah. something. <laughs> I liked Hardline. Hardline had a good campaign, and th- that was by Visceral, which was the same studio behind Dead Space. So I will give that team, rest in- yeah, rest in peace, yeah. Visceral. My, uh, you know, my friend Jamie always speaks very highly of like some of those Battlefield games. Is like there's really nothing quite like the multiplayer experience of some of those games, which is really cool that they fit into a unique niche there. And I wish that there were more stuff like them. I I think. So there's definitely been times where I appreciate like how massive those multiplayer matches can get, but like part of me feels and this this could be because I ha- the only one I like played Reese not recently but like just in terms of like when it came out would be Battlefield One, but I think when you compare Battlefield to like some, some of the other shooters out yeah. there, uh, it lacks a bit of personality like not not even the campaign just like the multiplayer I feel like you can mm-hmm. jump into like a Call of Duty multiplayer. And like, there's not necessarily a story. Maybe it's the presentation, the way things feel. It has its own personality and vibe to it compared to the, compared to Battlefield. The only thing I re- I remember yeah. about Battlefield One was people getting pissed that there was female soldiers in it. I think that was Battlefield Five. Well, I, yeah, I believe that was Five. Yeah, it was whatever one that was set in World War Two, and people got pissed. Yeah, it's like why is there a lady here? And it's like, well, the women ran the rebellion efforts. That, that it's literal history like why are you mad about this <laughs> excuse me sir we want very hard realistic shooters that's why you can jump out of we an airplane man. and then you know, snipe on it and do a 360 no scope 500 feet in the Funny. air when you see the compilation we demand alpha of male shooters, damn it. where they're saying like 
oh, I don't like this Battlefield. Battlefield's supposed to be a realistic shooter. And then you you go back in time four years ago to one of their tweets where they're like, yeah, I don't really like Battlefield because it's a little too realistic, which isn't interesting to me. I mean, there's nothing more realistic than getting shot with a shotgun in the face and hiding yeah. behind cover, wiping the it's jelly just, off your if, face. If, if you're anybody, go. just, just if yeah. anybody hate women and move on, all right. Literally, <laughs> Nexus. That's what I was gonna Thank say. You. I was like, literally, like, <laughs> if they use the excuse, oh, it's not realistic. If this is blah blah blah, insert very offensive take here. Um, just say that you're sexist, racist, homophobic, yeah, whatever it is. It, just say on. you're a shit lord, and please. Stop wasting uh, my time. Dispense yourself. <laughs> dispense yourself in the nearest dumpster. Thanks. Also, yeah. <laughs> I should make that comment where uh, I went like, "Oh, we demand alpha male shooters." As I'm the person who talks about Call of Duty every single week, I demand alpha male shooter. <laughs> I mean, I could go off on this huge giant diatribe. So I think, uh, how how do I want to put this to, to like put it succinctly? The fuck, how am I going to do this? The the people that that say they're anti-censorship like oh you shouldn't censor a person's creative vision they're the same ones that fucking complain about this bullshit they're they're fucking hypocrites oh, to the fucking core it's ridiculous that oh man I, I could go uh, off i'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off name <laughs> rhymes with the b- rhymes with the bordering cough cough oh the quartering's a fucking piece of shit fuck you no. cough cough <laughs> cough cough He's a- <laughs> oh sorry or something or something stuck <laughs> can't get it out uh, <laughs> oh, oh, well. fuck. any any quick thoughts on e- the majority of ea sales being digital now no <laughs> it's not really. that surprising embrace it's the digital surprising. future i mean is that for recent reports or for for like the last couple years i mean if we're just going recent of course it's all digital um, so this is just specifically for EA. I, this might specifically be for their uh, third quarter 2021 oh, financial man. results. I say, man, my friend hasn't left the house in a year. Of course, all their sales are digital. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can sell Amazon stuff. I suppose. This is more of a hat. I mean, if you're I, getting it on Amazon, you might as well just get a code. I basically, these days... If I want like the box, if I if it's like a nice like special edition or whatever, or if it's a game I really really want, I will get uh, the the physical edition. Yeah. But if it's a game that I'm like kind of interested in playing mm-hmm. and and it's not that big of a deal, then I'll I'll buy it digitally. I don't even care. Yeah. I, I think that's a conflict. Something, something I really care about, I'll get physical. Like, I mean, I'm not gonna get. Other than 14. Actually, that's not even true. I got the physical edition of the last expansion. It came with a disc that had a Steam key in it. It came with a case that had a Steam key in it. Uh, if it's a Final <laughs> oh, Fantasy game, even... I'm not going to get that shit digital. What are you talking about? Uh, with the box. So, yeah, so exactly. Like, really, Final so Fantasy really, really one's got on two that. discs in it. Really, really quick on that. Blaine couldn't be here this week, but she did ominously tell me, you know what to do, so I am going to do the thing. Blaine and I want to get in on a tangent about how digital game like digital pc games still have plastic cases that still have a lot of like terrible recyclable trash in it please stop doing that <laughs> you're killing the environment like games don't need a plastic box <laughs> <laughs> i will say I, I wanted to get the resident evil um mm-hmm. eight collectors edition but i don't want a physical copy like i just want the statue whatever's in the collector's thing so uh I'm getting that on PC. As so, I very so awkwardly drink my cup of water as you say that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just getting the uh I'm just getting the deluxe edition. Um mostly because I have nowhere to put collectibles really. Pretty much all of our available shelving areas and surfaces are being taken up by other things. So <laughs> Well, Corey, that's because it's you're the ultimate the collectible. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> stop stop please please more more but stop let me open this thing you know is what was in screen? this thing i don't is have this... a webcam i don't know why i got a physical prop <laughs> this is the case the, the the little like the art on it it's reversible but it's the same on both sides there's a pay there's a place for a disc but there was like a piece of receipt paper with a steam key in why did i get why do i have this that's sounds about right though it's, the art's really pretty on it, though. And that's literally that. what you do, though. Really that's pretty. literally what you get. You get it for the case. Yosh- like, let's Yoshitake be honest. Amano the only art, reason. <laughs> a scary man with a big sword and a scary horse. 
Let's okay. see. Uh, wait, I wait. actually do have a physical prop. I can't say anything. Here's <laughs> my little You can pick up, can pick up the statue that came with it. Don't too. drop it this time, it. Sarah. I'm not going to drop it. That that that's a very meta joke. Don't go digging I, for I my. Still, I still have that blooper channel. video I can put no, up. No. But no, like I can't say anything. Wow does the same thing. Yeah. They release their collector's editions and they have like a fancy piece of paper in it. Yeah. Like here's your Shadowlands code, have fun. So I can't say anything because I have two of these fucking things. Yeah. I so, got a think, fancy think, book and a cool statue of a scary man I, with a big sword. I think I actually think Did you mean last... a hot man with a big sword? <laughs> I, from a certain point of view, sure. I actually think the last <laughs> Don't give me PC, that Obi Wan shit. Um I think the last PC uh what's it called a disc based game that I actually bought. God, well, well, I think it was world of Warcraft that I actually bought the disc for. Um, oh, God, maybe it was, was maybe, ago. Oh, you know what? Maybe it was the first Starcraft or something. I, I, I don't will even say remember. Blizzard goes all out on like their boxes for the PC. Oh, like, you open it. It's like, this just feels beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, look at this. Like, look at like the yeah. shininess on it. Like this but, thing's nuts. I mean, <laughs> the thing with the 14, when I got the box, got like the beautiful, a mono art on it but i now so have a pc that like i mean disc drives for pcs are pretty irrelevant now so. i don't yeah, even have like, one in mine yeah oh i still got one this. baby i'll look never take they, they go all out on their on their like collector's editions just for a piece of paper in it that says here's your code and for oh, a wow. mouse pad uh, and book. paradise yeah. island says back when they had really bad internet they bought the physical copy of gta 5 for pc and it had like nine discs are you oh serious? my god I'm happy. Nine? I'm happy she said that in chat i was about to i was about to say shout out to my friend elena find the physical copy of gta 5 <laughs> for pc it was even weird on um the seventh gen of consoles which is a 360 generation did it um if you had like a regular what, what did they even call that version 360 i had like a, a 13 gigabyte hard drive where if you had that you just couldn't install it because you needed a bigger hard drive it's fucking ridiculous yeah. it's like when you torn some legally torn something and you have these legal things that you got from torrenting it and it's it's like multiple rar files and you're like what do i do with these so i put them <laughs> together you put them in the same folder and they work how does that i don't understand mm -hmm. um let's let's see since we're already semi talking about blizzard right now uh during an earnings call activision blizzard has announced that overwatch 2 and diablo 4 uh won't be launching in 2021 uh both titles ah! were previously <laughs> both titles ah! really weird both ah. titles were previously announced during 2019's BlizzCon, uh, with the former's previous entry launching in 2016 and the latter's in 2012. Um, uh, I'm just going to be so a sad strange. Diablo fan in the corner, excuse me. I know. I think Overwatch I'm 2. So, I want Diablo 4, or <laughs> yeah, Diablo 4 so bad. Uh, Overwatch 2 is <laughs> in a really weird spot because um, I, I think most of the communities in, in the camp of, yeah. you can just patch this content really? into overwatch <laughs> one just make it as a games as a service whatever you want to call it it's a living game but they have purposely held back on content for overwatch one specifically so they actually have something for overwatch two which is actively hurt the game for yeah. I, don't, I don't remember like the it's last literally. substantial updates but yeah that game is slowed down and there's less interest yeah. as a result in it because of that I, um, I don't personally I, like Diablo, so you, you guys can talk. Why about would you announce these games so early? So I just early. can't so think of anything else happening at the time. <laughs> I just Personally, don't know why they would announce them so here, early. I don't think Diablo 4 was announced too early because they actually had that playable at BlizzCon yeah. that year. Like, like it, it wasn't playable to the public, but journalists and influencers were, were able to play the first area and three and three of the of the base classes so like it was playable i don't think diablo 4 was announced too early i would 100 percent believe that overwatch 2 was like, so like, they sure like, were uh, blitzing to uh, get it let's, out there yeah let's be real here for a second Boo. blizzard really? saw the blitz chung situation <laughs> or is it is it blitz chung is that I believe the correct so. pronunciation i believe it is they saw the blitz chung situation and they said we already have these pre-rendered cutscenes made years in advance we need a smoke screen to make people not talk about this anymore so that they're talking about Blizzard in a positive light. And they didn't care how long those games were going to take to come out. 
They wanted Overwatch 2 to be trending on Twitter instead of free Hong Kong and fuck Blizzard. <laughs> that's that's no, basically and I it. completely agree with you, especially because if you go back and look at that Overwatch 2 gameplay trailer, it's basically just Overwatch 1. It just looks a tiny bit prettier and yep. the uh, UI has changed. Oh boy. Like it's it's exactly the same thing if you just like pay attention to it and they're like oh we just gave all the characters brand new outfits it's like uh, oh boy i mean i mean this is literally just, the fucking studio yeah. they behind, never like, the get big, new outfits this is literally right? the studio behind the biggest mmo of all fucking time and they just updated the same game like why can't you yeah. do fucking do the same for a watch it's it's, it's yeah it's, dumb. it's yeah. just stupid I, I never understood why they're coming out with overwatch 2 when it's like i don't know like it's an online it's never really been like any a story driven game it's literally it's just getting a, a story mode like yeah. it's getting a full on like i think they could then just they update, story mode. then just update the base game you don't need to make a yeah. second game i just think they could charge for like the campaign portion i'd be fine with that but for the multiplayer why yeah. we 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 should also preface that um around the time that this earnings call came out of rumors, and this rumor has been around for fucking ages, uh, that there's a Diablo 2 remake in development. And it was meant to always come out before Diablo 4, uh, because Diablo 4's story is supposed to come directly after Diablo 2's, apparently, if I remember correctly. Um, so the rumor is for that is that motherfucking Vicar, uh, what the hell was the developers that Blizzard just ate who worked on Tony, Tony Hawk? I believe Vicarious. Yes, yeah, so Vicarious just got... I'd say they were eaten by Activision. I doubt this was Blizzard's doing. They were eaten by Activision and pretty much put to work on Blizzard projects. Um, yeah, and yeah, the rumor yeah, is yeah, sure. that they are working on Diablo 2. A full remake of Diablo 2. Apparently it's been in development for a couple of years. So uh, it's supposed to be announced at Blizzard's BlizzCon, BlizzCon Online in like two weeks. And that's supposed to be the like Diablo thing of this. Year. So then, what about Diablo three? When when did Diablo three even happen? Are they just uh, like not? That was 2012. Oh no, are no, you talking I about know, the lore of Diablo? The lore of right? Diablo. Let's oh, so, okay. like, suppose I don't fully know up to that. I just know that Diablo four, they're taking a lot from Diablo two. Like when they when they announced it, they were full on like we are like taking a lot from, because Diablo two. For people who don't know, who don't play it, Diablo 2 was incredibly... You had pentagrams as your option choice little buttons. They were, oh, yeah. like, they were like demons. Like, obviously, there's demons everywhere in Diablo, but there was a lot more demonic imagery and a lot more like satanic imagery in Diablo 2. That's what they're going back to in Diablo 4. And if you've seen the announcement trailer with one that has Lilith, our queen, our lord and savior in it, they they totally are doing that. They are going back to full on human sac sacrifices. They're going back to like pentagrams and Satan shit. Like they're going that full on like, back to Diablo two. And so um, supposedly the story is actually takes place after Diablo two. So it, it's like after Diablo two, a little bit after Diablo three. That kind of thing. It's a little bit confusing. Mm -hmm. I've never really been up on Diablo lore, so I'm not the person to ask. But but what but, I'm um, hearing what I'm hearing, Sarah, is that yes. you're going to be my Diablo four buddy. Or, well, you know, <laughs> you're gonna you know, you're gonna have to fight Blaine. You're gonna have to fight Blaine because Blaine I, and I started a Diablo two playthrough. I, Corey, I, I will make a pledge to you. I have traditionally not enjoyed Diablo, but I am more than willing to be your Diablo buddy. Okay. okay. But, wait, yeah, wait, wait, wait. So, what platform um, are we talking? So, for those who don't know, and I just mentioned it earlier, there's a BlizzCon online happening in about two weeks, and this announcement was also to pretty much let people know what to look out for at blizzcon online meaning there will be like little to no over over the overwatch 2 we'll maybe get a new playable class in diablo 4 and like a new area or maybe a new like enemy introduction because they already introduced cannibals are in diablo 4 so they're going to be introducing probably more 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 about that and new class probably a new trailer we don't know um but we're most likely going to be hearing a fuck ton of wow news in two weeks. So if you people don't like World of Warcraft, don't pay attention to BlizzCon online <laughs> because that's all it's going to be. Uh, spoiler because alert: Blizzard the, knows the, what makes them billions of dollars every yeah. year. And spoiler it's alert: the uh, <laughs> the final boss of Diablo Four is going to be Era Thirty Seven. <laughs> What's that? I don't oh, that's that. the. Uh, <laughs> it, it's a meme of. Uh, 
when everyone's trying to log into Diablo 3 on day one, they got oh, error 37. I know what you're talking in. about now. Okay, yeah, because Diablo 3 was a mess at launch. Yeah. <laughs> and it slowly got better. Please play Reaper of Souls. You can get it on the Switch. It runs at 60 FPS on the Switch. It fucking... It is smooth as butter. It is it's amazing. Pretty, it's on a the pretty Switch. good expansion. I enjoy that expansion. It's also, just, just the game running on the Switch itself is kind of nuts, but it runs so good and the controls are so good. That it's my go-to, like, I, w I, I can play it for, like, hours. Like, I'll just sit down and forget what time it is and just play Diablo 3 for, for like, I've, hours. I've become such a, f a PC snob that I went, even when I see 60, I'm like, really? That's all you can do? On the Switch? <laughs> On the Switch? That runs Animal Crossing and overheats. <laughs> <laughs> like it's I know, impressive I know. how they got Diablo running and I have not played Overwatch on the Switch I got it for Christmas last year but I have not played it apparently Overwatch runs pretty good on the Switch too surprisingly so it's just yeah Activision's making a shit ton of money Blizzard's making a shit ton of wow money what people fail to realize was hidden in that earnings report is blizzard saying that they're working on multiple free-to-play world of warcraft mobile titles which is just like oh no not a good oh no a bad oh no <laughs> a very bad oh no because we don't know what the fuck they're going they are going to be so they could be boring as fuck like farming sims but you're a panda in pandaria farming carrots i don't i don't know it's it wow fans aren't exactly happy about it so we'll see when blizzard has blizzcon in like two weeks but let's, let's see uh bioware has announced that the remaster mass effect collection uh the legendary edition will include all previously released dlc with the exception of the first game's pinnacle station dlc uh, while ultimately of little consequence to the overarching narrative, uh, fans describe the combat scenario late in addition as an enjoyable inclusion to the base game. Uh, Pinnacle Station's exclusion from the collection stems from the DLC's developer, I, how do you pronounce this, Demiurge Studios, uh, losing the source code for the expansion. While oh, the no. team at, while the team at Bio... The guys? We don't know. <laughs> Uh, while the team at Bioware attempted countless ways to track down the source code, it was determined that the only two options were to either completely remake the DLC, which would add a, reportedly another full six months just to do it mm. uh, with most of the team that they have, or to simply exclude it from the collection. Um, as an anecdote, and I'm sure that Sarah is familiar with this, uh, Blue Point Games, the studio behind countless remaster collections, uh, directly rips data from retail discs in order to ensure 100% data copy. Uh, also, the catch being that the process is highly time consuming and requires intensive work to rework every single yeah. piece of data by hand. Uh, the reason I, I bring this up specifically is the uh, Silent Hill HD collection that came out, I believe, 2012 to maybe 2011, something like that. But the issue there and why that game was so fucked up is because they did lose the source code. So they yeah, had to use an earlier copy, which it was, a, it was an incomplete game. And uh, higher ups at Konami were not willing to invest the time and resources into just doing yeah. basically the blue point method, which it, it is more work, um, but it's it's 100 percent on. Also, for the Kingdom Hearts 1.5 collection that released on PlayStation 3, they had lost the entire source yeah. code of Kingdom Hearts 1, so they had to rebuild the fucking game from scratch. They had someone yeah. playing it on the development team, and they would just, like, look at the dude where he was at, yeah. just like, recreate it from really scratch. Funny. So Did this a team, similar thing with the FF8 remaster, actually. Yeah, like, like yeah. This, this team working on Mass Effect has no fucking excuse. Just fucking rebuild it. Like, just have uh, someone play it on the and, development I mean, team. I mean, to, the, I'm, to Blue Point's credit with stuff like this, I mean, the AI for those enemies in the Demon Souls remaster, that's the same oh, AI nuts. from PS3, from PS3 Demon Souls. Mm. They, they react exactly uh, the same. The I, whole that I, can, yeah. I think I'm of two minds of this in that one, um, I did play this DLC when it first came out. Um, I am not saddened by its exclusion whatsoever. I think... Um, having better content in the game is just going to make it a nicer, thinner package, and it's there's no narrative in it. I, so I, I'm not saddened to see it, but every time I see the source code um, reason being brought up for why they couldn't do it, what they're really saying is we don't want to spend the time and resources onto this. Yeah, and which I, I don't personally blame them. 
Um, but yeah. for when it comes to other stuff like the Silent Hill situation, just like, yeah, you, you, you had this option. You just didn't want to invest in it. But uh, I look what, at what it, about you, Corey? I mean, um, or I'm sorry, go ahead, Nexus. I'll, I'll let Corey talk, actually. I'm sorry, say that again. I couldn't hear you. Oh, no, just just asking yeah, for yeah, your yeah. thoughts, I guess. Uh, oh, OK. Yeah. Um, basically, yeah, I don't really have any thoughts. I, th- I think when you brought up the the Silent Hill HD collection, that kind of hurt my soul. Uh, all over again. <laughs> Just like the, the oh. Comic Sans sign and the glitch where, glitch where I think it's Heather but like, can can't move the same way anymore. Like she's stuck yeah. in the animation and she moves super fast. Yeah, yeah. people's teeth and their fucking eyeballs and stuff. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. yeah. So I don't really have too much in a, of an opinion on this topic, though. I just uh, I. I don't know. I just hope that people get better. I hope that they don't take shortcuts. And uh, if you lose the source code, I don't know how that happens, but you got to back your shit up, people. You yeah, just got to back your shit up. <laughs> I will say to their, to their slight mean, credit, because it was developed by an external yeah. studio, uh, they might not have had the same um, archiving processes in mind. So to, so to them, it might have been like, okay, well, we did our job. Here is whatever executable to do it on. Uh, we need a clean space. We'll we'll get rid of it. But so that that would at least be how the issue happened versus like an in-house mistake. You know, uh, it's just one of those things you got to make sure that you have all of your source files. Like when you're, if even if it's even if you're outsourcing to a different company, you have to be like, okay, so you guys are done. You guys did your job. Okay, but give us give us all of your source files, every single thing you even took notes on. Mm-hmm. Just literally package it together. Get and then send it to us or give it to us on a hard drive or something like that so we can put it in a vault down the line if we choose to revisit it. That would be I the responsible way of doing it. I but will say, I don't, I'm sorry, go ahead, Corey. This, but this is like, this is totally logistical. They clearly need better logistics. Like, <laughs> I, I will say, from personal experience from working in a media production environment, um, there, there's been stuff from even from people that worked at the company from before me where. Yes, it was years before I was even there. And then it comes up like, oh, yeah, we need this file from this project. And I look for it where it, where it should be. And it's just, it's just non-existent. I'm just yeah. like, well, fuck, what, what do we do? We, we need it. We don't have this. So and I, I can understand why things happen, especially with obviously the place where I was working doesn't have the resources of a fucking Bioware EA, regardless if it was back in, uh, I believe, 2007 when Mass Effect 1 came out. Um but yeah, they, they should back stuff up. <laughs> yeah, it's very. And I important. mean, like with Square Enix and interviews about why FF8 was lost, they would always say, like, yeah, you know, when we were doing whatever we were doing with that source code, we weren't really thinking about people remaking it. You know, we just put it somewhere, <laughs> and then it got lost. I think you know? people just need to embrace the uh, the blue point method. Yeah. Sure, fire away, you know, but more resources, but it's going to come this, down to basically someone signing off DLC, on that. I kind of think about it the same way Yoshi P was talking about cutting ultimate from the next uh, patch, which is like, you know, realistically, we're going to have to spend like two months of work on this. It might delay the expansion and it might delay the patch. Let's be realistic. How many people can play ultimate, right? You have to beat the most recent Savage fight, which not that many people do. And then this is a fight that's way harder than even that how many people are realistically going to go into it and actually clear it is it worth delaying the patch and they decided no and when i look at this dlc it's like i mean it's pretty cool but i don't really want to do time trial combat missions in mass effect one yeah when i have when i have two and three to look forward to on the same disc you know is it worth delaying the game six months to do this DLC, I, mm-hmm. I if I was if I was in charge, I really wouldn't think so, you know. Yeah, I think that's why I'm willing to give this more credence because I'm exactly in that same train of thought. Just yeah. like I played this DLC, I do not give a shit about this yeah, DLC one I mean, way or the I other. Played it, it's, it's cool. The ending, the thing you get at the end is pretty cool, but I don't know. Just I don't think I would ever want to play it a second time. But I like, think the fact that it's when you have two and three to look forward to. I mean, yeah, why would I want to spend more time in Mass Effect 1's combat versus yeah, 2 and 3? Exactly. <laughs> the whole source code thing reminds me of when, uh, uh, bless you, of when, uh, when 
Night Dive Studios was talking about how they got the uh, System Shock 2 Enhanced Edition. They literally had to uh, contact the bank that the developer went oh, bankrupt God. to because the bank oh, owned God. it. And they're like, we don't know what the fuck we have. And they're like, <laughs> uh, we know what you have. That's one of the biggest cult video games in history. Can we please have that? And the bank's like, I mean, sure. We don't know what this is, but you can have it. And that's how Night Dive Studios got System Shock 2 back <laughs> out of literally the dead was just going to the bank and being like, we know that you know that you don't know what you have. <laughs> we would like to have it. We will buy it from you. And so no. they bought it from the bank. And that's how we have the System Shock 2 Enhanced Edition happening in like in like a couple of months. Because literally, Night Dive went to a bank. And it's it's just nuts. When you think about the preservation thing, it's a it's nuts because source codes are in banks source source codes are in people's like like random box of crap because they're like oh here's the source code of like this random game that was big in the 90s that no one cares about now only like a select few handful of people and they're gonna like sell it on ebay and some rich dude is gonna buy it and it's just gonna go hand to hand and the sort source codes are nuts especially yeah. for like old 90s stuff highly recommend you guys google anything about source codes yeah. from like really old 90s games because it's a trip <laughs> let's see i think it's about gonna do it for the news for this week um let's see Corey, you want to go on and talk about what some of the stuff you've been playing i would love to um so lately i have been playing um just chilling i've been finally playing that game uh the long dark and it's uh, for those of you that don't know what that game is. It's literally a survival game where you crash land on an island called Bear Island, and you have to survive the elements. Um, is it called Bear Island because there's bears, or because there's nothing on it? So it's B E A R, and there is a bear. There is a singular bear on that island. <laughs> <laughs> what bear? It is a very <laughs> monstrous bear. One bear. It is a very monstrous bear, but it is one bear. Um, it's funny to me. Is it unbearable? I stop with the puns. <laughs> God, I'm very good at them. Sorry. Uh huh. Okay. Anyways, um, <laughs> I'll have to put this in my uh, in my pun cubby. Shut up. God. I'm literally going to stack you <laughs> through this camera. <laughs> he needs to be stopped. I'll, I'll pause. <laughs> I okay. wish Rem was here because he, he plays Trunks in Dragon Ball Fighter Z, and just like it, Trunks is super when he does the freeze, he goes, you need to be stopped. And we always yell it whenever he does it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. This is true. That's exactly it. Um, no, but but the game the game is actually really interesting because, and I'm just going to talk about this game very briefly and then move on to the next one. But um, the game mechanics are really interesting in that game. Just how the environment works with your character and works with your clothes and everything. Your clothes can get wet. They can freeze. It'll. You can get hypothermia. You have to repair your clothes. Uh, the wind, like the wind, as a when in in accordance to your um to your character uh, like it actually makes a difference if you're ducking behind like uh, a pallet of logs versus being inside an actual building it's insane um because you have a body temperature obviously and you have to watch all of your meters so you can survive very fun game so is it um, more survival or is there like any kind of real external um conflicts that you're coming in in contact with so yeah, so you do come up, you do carry weapons and stuff, um, because there's actively packs of wolves that roam the the uh, the areas, and you just have to watch out for them because either they will be hunting deer or they'll just be roaming around. Um, and if you fire if you fire a gun, it'll briefly scare them off. Mm. Um, I have the experience of shooting a wolf point blank in the face with a flare gun and instantly killing it. So that was interesting. <laughs> Um, I think you should watch the movie <laughs> Frozen and not the one with the princess. Oh my god! Um, I know what you're talking about. Uh, I've, I think I have seen that movie. Um, yeah. But you can like hunt animals and stuff, and use their meat and their skin and stuff because you do have to eat and keep your person like yeah. nourished and rested yeah. and everything like that. Um, 
other than that game, I have been I playing. I just started playing last Concrete last Genie on my PS5 uh, before this stream. It's on a PS. Oh, I'm sorry. Good. It's on PS Plus this month. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just a very beautiful cinematic kind of like experience. It's it. Um, I mean, it is a. It has a lot of fun mechanics in the game and everything so far, but it's like it's like watching a um, an animation studio make a game basically and it's like very nice like fun animation um and so i'm really enjoying that game uh so far and i think that's that's pretty much it i'm really i'm really i'm not really uh playing much else um because i'm literally gritting my teeth and waiting for resident evil 8 to be released so yeah (laughs) do you want to talk about um about Jackbox a little bit. You had a little community night you did on uh, over on That's your right. Twitch channel. That's right. So I had a recently I had a community night in my channel. Um, currently named Celtic Scribe. Uh, and Friday night we had our Friday night festival, which can be anything. But we decided to I decided to do a community night that night, and we played um, some Jackbox. And uh, all of all of my lovely citizens in the chat were memeing the crap out of me, and <laughs> and making the game hilariously fun. And uh, we had a really good community night, and it was just really fun. So I love Jackbox for that for that reason too. I because it brings people together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and go next since I don't have too much yeah. to talk about. Go ahead. Because uh, it's mainly just more Assassin's Creed. I think all my previous statements stand. Um, a lot of the story is like very segmented by by kind of separate chapters where you're going around making alliances. They're kind of isolated um, storytelling experiences, which can be fun, but it kind of loses the overarching narrative. I think I did get a little bit back to the overarching but there's a character with um there's a character that kind of pulls like a 180 and i don't think the game necessarily sells it from like the last time you saw them like how that transition happens and i don't know if this is a spoiler thing i don't know if people care about this or not um so, so some of the latest um I guess the new RPG like Assassin's Creed games have had mm-hmm. segments where they take like the mythos of like of these, of these different mythologies and they kind of make it real. But it's actually fucking what what are the um, the ancient race of people, whatever, in Assassin's Creed precursor, Prothean. It's, it's all the same Ooh. shit. Precursor. Oh, what the fuck are they called? Ooh, if you would have asked me this question like five years ago, I'd remember <laughs> Anyway, I can't remember those... if it was precursors or like the people who came or like the beans who came before. No one I don't remember. <laughs> but um, I'm to but, but I so they, they, they've kind of like made it within that universe. Like, oh yeah, the cyc- Cyclops has actually existed, no. but it's like experimentations and like here's this Griffin and Sphinxes. Like they, they're all real apparently, but because of this, uh, I'm going to use the wrong term purposely. The Protheans uh, put it there. Um, the just is a mass effect. effect. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the yeah I know. Like, you're right. That, I was that's, like, why that's exactly why I used it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so there's stuff like that. So the the Greek, not Greek, the um, the Norse mythology is real within the context of this game. Mm. And so there's a segment where you kind of go to um, where you go to Asgard and you're playing as a character from there and it's just like this really weird segue because like the thing you do to go into there is actually from what i believe is a side quest and it just completely throws any illusion of like narrative pacing from the base game just completely out the window it's just like yeah you know that siege you were doing to like gain alliances forget that we're going to do 10 hours in asgard for this completely separate storyline and i think that might tie in a little bit Later on, I, I did get a little bit spoiled on the game, so I kind of see where those connections are going with another oh, yeah. character and the, the baseline. Spoiled. Yeah, there's um, low key. There's there's some there's some weird stuff going on there. That's did, all I'll say about it. Did you just it. say what I thought? I, you said? Uh, I saw a lot of stuff, <laughs> and like they I heard really you. go hard into some of that stuff, and it's weird because I feel like Assassin's Creed kind of abandoned that for a while. Yeah, I think um, so. Obviously, I think obviously the last one to go like super hard into the the uh, Prothean time, the Prothean stuff, whatever, was um, 
it was, uh, it was uh, Assassin's Creed 3, and then they yeah. kind of dropped the ball, like, with 4 onwards. And I, I, I think the one that actively pissed me off the most was in Unity, like, you're chasing after the... I don't even remember what the fucking plot of Unity. I don't remember shit. But you're looking after this thing, and it's, like, this big deal in the present timeline. And then the game literally ends with, oh, I don't know, I guess we lost it. I don't know. That was a fun <laughs> adventure, wasn't it? I'm so just like, funny. motherfucker, you it's wasted so my... Nothing comes of it. I'm like, really? Yeah. It's so... But yeah, so I, I, I stopped playing Assassin's Creed after Black Flag um, yeah. because... Uh, oh, dude, they, you, you missed out on the Assassin's Creed nostalgia train last week. It was beautiful. Well, after they killed off Desmond, I was like, okay, whatever. I don't know where this is going now. That sucks. But like... You might want to play like, Valhalla. But like, um, oh no! What's it called? No, oh, do they bring on. the white, the the random ass boy back? I'm um, not gonna say. Bring it. my boy back. But anyways, uh, I, I gave <laughs> oh, it no, one I last. I gave it one last shot. I gave with Black Flag, and um, I, I liked Black Flag. It was fun, but I was like, eh, I'm not super into the series anymore. Um, Valhalla looks fun. Mm-hmm. But, I played um, a bit of Odyssey because you, you can be a buff lesbian in it. My really hell like yeah, that. and I really identify Odyssey. strongly with that. Odyssey there is was, probably the best one of then the, these three. The new DLC ones. was homophobic. Oh yeah, <laughs> it, Odyssey for me. I put thirty or so hours into Odyssey just doing side stuff. And when oh, I yeah. checked my, I when I checked my Ubisoft account and it said that I was only fifteen percent through the story with thirty hours, I had I, I had a panic attack and I stopped playing it. Yeah, Malacca. Yeah, that's <laughs> there was just too you know, much. There was when, too uh, much to get so overwhelmed. Next time I upgrade my computer, I might finish that and stream it or something because oh, my computer I, was uh, having trouble. That game is not optimized very well. I I, I almost forgot. Um. On the Ubisoft store, um, what you play Ubisoft Connect, whatever, whatever rebranding they're using it, um, they do better deals for their games on their own platform versus on Steam or um, the Epic Game Store because obviously they get the bigger cut because it's them. They're not taking a percentage out of it. Um, you can also use your Ubisoft coins, which you get by just playing games across any platform. It doesn't have to be on PC. You can spend a hundred of those coins to get a twenty percent off discount on your entire cart. So oh if you God, load up, you can get stuff for is. super cheap. So I would I would recommend anyone who's playing on PC, please buy it on UPlay. It's not that bad anymore. It is not bad. It's completely yeah, functional. It's a lot better, better than Origin. Oh yeah, fuck Origin. Oh God. But um, aside from Assassin's Creed, um, Loki having some shenanigans going on in it. If you keep um, saying Loki, I'm gonna strangle you through the screen because you're spoiling it for me, and I don't and I don't appreciate it. I I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, um, uh, aside from that, the only other games I've been playing is Resident Evil Two on stream, which I think I already have my thoughts out Hell into yeah. the ether about it. She's still fucking fantastic i love the giant alligator i love that it cool got game. turned into a set piece good job um, Mia. hell yeah um and then resident evil 6 i streamed with uh sarah last night i i love resident evil 6 it's got a lot of issues there, there's some very bad game design stuff like you're going down a street and there's like no proper warning for like oh here's a car just going to suddenly smack you and then you're just dead like there's no way to know that it's going to happen so bad bad game design on like multiple fronts but overall i still really enjoy it it's a fucking fun ass time i mean i guess you know i've Uh, never been um super big into resident evil but i always love uh there's i think it was a gdc conference with one of the like big resident evil directors where he's like yeah you know Internally, we always view Resident Evil as trilogies. So one, two, and three is the lots camera angles, like classic horror, and then four, five, six is a trilogy of like big um, over-the-shoulder action games uh, with like kind of more actiony horror. And six, obviously, is uh, like the the six peak is the of that, you know. And then it looks like seven, eight, and possibly nine is going to be like you know the first person, like more like in your face horror like horrifying horror resident evil 6 is a mess like roman <laughs> nomad says hey shout out to roman not Ro- roman god i can't speak right now roman nomad um resident evil 6 is a friend who is constantly drunk and belligerent and they have a lot of issues in their life but 
you can't help but have a good time when you're around them. Like Maybe they accidentally now. bump into you once in a while. Maybe make you spill something, but they're they're good to have around. And then Resident oh, Evil Seven is the friend know. that you that you were surprised you didn't have earlier, and you were like, "Where have you been all my life?" <laughs> kind of how and I then, feel about Dragon Guard Three. <laughs> and then the Resident Evil Two remake is your childhood friend resurrected as like RoboCop or something. Yeah. And then Resident Evil 3 is that hot himbo at the uh, party making sure that everyone gets home safe. I feel like that's not the only time you've made that reference. I think, I feel like you were waiting to use that. Like you had it written down. I was. I, I didn't have it written down. I was just waiting to use it because obviously. <laughs> uh, but that's about it for me. Um, Nexus, uh, what have you been up to? Well, I technically could just say that the last week I've played everything I've played since the last time I was on, but I'll try and keep it to interesting stuff. Uh, I've been playing 14 a lot, obviously. Uh, I mean, I'm run of FC. Uh, I've been playing uh, with some of the newer people, doing new content as it comes out. I've been um, doing the new raid tier, and I think I've been doing pretty good this tier, which is always fun. Samurai is really fun to play in the new raid tier. It's fun to be a melee DPS again. Uh, I got a fun group to play with. I uh, haven't quite cleared the tier yet because I just don't have, uh, with my new job, I just don't have as much time to dump into it as I would like. But um, I got onto two kicks. Uh, one of them was uh, because my friend Hussein has been playing Fallout New Vegas. I decided to play Fallout 1. Oh, wow. Uh, which is a game I've already played before. I really love Fallout 1 and 2. Uh, and I decided that this time I was going to replay Fallout 1 uh, and do a full pacifist run where I don't technically kill a single enemy. Um, Define so technically. Isn't Fallout so, 1 like a uh, top down? Yeah, it's oh, like yeah. aerial view. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when I say technically, at the end of the day, in order to get one of these endings, you got to blow up the base with the super mutant and kill everyone <laughs> inside. But to your credit, they could have gotten out. You know, that was a silent alarm, but they could have got out. If There's they a big old asterisk right there. <laughs> yeah, big asterisk on technically pacifist. But uh, I always like that in those games when you have so many choices that you really can go through the whole game as a pacifist. Uh, I don't want to steal from H Bomber guy. We talked about um, in Fallout 2 in the tutorial, if you dump enough of your stats in a speech, when you're doing the combat tutorial, your, your trainer kind of gets to a point where he's like, hey, you know, you, you're you're a guy who likes to talk and talk his way out of situations, but ultimately you are going to have to get to a, a point where you have to fight someone, you have to kill someone. And you, if you have enough speech, you have the option to just say, I don't believe that's true. I think you can talk your way out of any situation and you can find a, find a way out without violence. And in Fallout 2, if you have enough speech, you totally can. It's awesome. I feel like the ultimate realization of that train of thought, at least, is um, outer outer uh, worlds yeah i didn't play you, i didn't unfortunately play too much of it but uh I've heard, it is uh, I've heard beautiful about that it is beautiful being able to talk yourself out of every single situation in that game I, yeah. i'm pretty sure you so, still have to fight like bandits or whatever i don't think you can talk to them but like every other like key moment you can entirely um subvert with with dialogue yeah. options See, the only thing I remember from, from, from that game was talking my way out of, like, someone was like, you can either leave here violently or you can leave here kindly. And I was like, or you can pay me $200 to not to not fight anybody. And the guy was like, okay, so can me $200. And then I left. And then everybody killed themselves. <laughs> and I was like, hold yeah. on. I was like, I think I made a mistake. Yeah. I was like, hold up. It's like, wait a minute, because it's like you leave and then you're gone for like, for like a day, and then you go back and and like everybody in the town is dead, and this one town person is like, yes, they all, they all, they all killed themselves after after something happened at the plant, and I went, this two hundred dollars has blood on it. <laughs> so you're uh, going to say something real quick, Corey? <laughs> what? Um, no, I was just going to say. So you're basically the character from Undertale. Yeah, basically. Oh, yes. uh, yeah. Maybe. Very similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, uh, oh God. also been on a big Star Wars kick I've rewatched uh, most of the Clone Wars I never watched like the last two seasons and uh, I mean hey I'm just gonna say it end of Clone Wars is probably some of the best Star Wars ever like, it's that so whole good. last arc is amazing it's I mean, so, so good I'm still in season two so I got a while felt, to go but felt, 
oh, you're going to get there. And you, you know, whenever you're with a long game or long franchise or long like series and then you get to the last episode and you feel sad because you're saying bye to all your friends. Yeah. Clone Wars hits you like a truck with that. It's but rough. then, but then you get to watch Rebels and you feel yeah. warm and fuzzy inside. Of course, and of course, <laughs> a certain character might might be in Mandalorian season two, maybe a little bit. Mm-hmm. But um, fingers crossed. Uh, aside from <laughs> Jar- that, Jar- watching Binks. movies, not a movie <laughs> podcast, but you know what? I'll say it. I watched Rogue One, and uh, when I first watched that movie, I oh, really did y- not like it. But a lot of people that I have respect for really love that movie. So I was like, you know what? I'll give it a second shot. It's the best one. I'll be one. real. I don't like love it, love it. But that movie's pretty good. It's pretty I cool. Love it one. is, it oh is hands down my favorite Star Wars yeah. thing of all time. Like even above Empire. It, yeah. You want to talk? I you want to talk it. about? You want to talk about bad side story Star Wars films? Solo is a bad Star Wars side story. <laughs> I watched that one too. But uh, I've only also seen... before I before I move on from movies, I want to say seven eight are dope. Movies are yes. actually awesome. Seven oh, and eight. It, it's kind of weird eight. how nine. it's kind of weird Not... how there's only two <laughs> movies in that trilogy. Yeah. Can't believe they canceled the trilogy. It's really unfortunate, but, uh, you know. <laughs> At least they happened. left it off on a really nice philosophical note that actually yeah. advanced the entire franchise. Yeah, they made a movie, a Star Wars movie about something. It's pretty crazy. It, it would be a real shame if they backtracked on every single yeah. little thing because of fan outcry. <laughs> sure would be. A Jedi's weapon deserves more respect. No one's ever really gone. Uh, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so <laughs> video games. Uh, I also... Uh, Battlefront 2 was free. I got it. That game's pretty fun. I really like playing a clone commando, and I didn't play much of the story, but it's pretty cool. Have you played the Ewok mode? No, I'll try it. Oh, I will play that with, with you. I've um, been playing it with Rem and my friend Jamie, and it's been fun. Um, but the last thing that I'll talk about, the other Star Wars thing, is I've been replaying KOTOR, and I forgot how much I love that game. It is so whack to get that game working on a modern PC, but man, what a fun Whack. game. What a great game. I can't play it in borderless windowed, and it has to be in a small window on my computer, and if I try and stream it on Discord, the game crashes. It, but it's so, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's a fun game. Love that game. I, I will say up playing old games during my segment because I'm yeah. feeling this pain too. I can't wait to play KOTOR 2, which I do think is better. And it's my uh, favorite Star Wars thing ever. I'll say in a weird way, um, we can definitely add that onto the list. But I think like Fallout 3 is my go-to example of there's just some games are just unplayable on modern uh, PC yeah. OSs like Windows 10. Like Fallout 3, good fucking luck trying to get Man. that running on Windows 10. <laughs> playing Fallout 1 was a nightmare too. And in, uh, in that scenario, uh, like like even like a 360 copy of like these games is probably like the go to way to do it. Even if you can like technically run it at like higher frame rates, higher resolution, whatever on PC, it doesn't matter if it doesn't fucking work. Uh, and then to wrap things up, I don't have enough to say about it because I haven't beaten it, but I've been playing Yakuza Zero because I've been meaning to get in Yakuza, and I got really into it as soon as I got the the business side quest with Kiryu. Uh, I only just beat the chapter where you unlock it but i did literally do the entire business side quest and i maxed out my character uh you're braver than i uh i got the dragon style it's dope um i will say encountered an issue where i forgot to save for a little bit and then when i went to the save machine uh the game crashed and i lost about six hours of my life oh no Uh, so I did install a trainer uh, and I yeah. did give myself infinity money so that I could just do the side quest. Uh, but you know what? I would have dropped the game if I didn't do that. So uh, I'm glad I did because I'm having fun. Nice. So no, I have a little too yeah. much money now. <laughs> Let's see. I so, mean, uh, it's like the Sims. It's not fun unless you put in all those cheat codes to get infinite money so you can build the mansion of your dreams. So let's be honest. Yeah. I, I was... Like, <laughs> Anytime I lose progress from like a crash or if a game crashes at all, like I get really out of it. They are very good same. game. I never played I, Shadow of the Tomb Raider because one time it blue screened and I'm too afraid to turn it on again. I can't and say I anything because I played uh, Guilty Gear Overture with nothing but mods oh, on. Because if you catch me playing that fucking game normally, I would kill myself. Oof, and I was, was like, give me infinite time. Give I'm me infinite good. power. 
<laughs> I was like, let me just play this game so I can play it, and I did. I played it with a full modding thing, like so, all the mods. That's a MOBA on. before they knew what MOBAs were. Uh, Sarah, uh, even hearing you playing through Cyberpunk, like I've been playing on PC, I wasn't having crashes for like the last portion I was playing, whatever. And like I'm just hearing you play, just like, oh yeah, it only crashed like twelve times. I'm just like, eh, damn, what? It crashes down. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Like one crash, I'm just like I'm good. Can I? Can yeah, I? Yeah, I'm not playing that. Playing? I'm not playing that game until it stops crashing. Yes, go ahead, sir. <laughs> Yay! Um, Blaine and I played some Rainbow Six Siege. That was fun. Yeah. I'm still bonking people. It's great. Um, I got. If you can't tell by my mic, by my camera, I talked about it last week. I have a new streaming setup, and I was going to stream a playthrough of heavily modded playthrough. Because I love this game without my heart and soul, but if you catch me playing it without without an invincibility mod on, I am not playing it correctly. <laughs> uh, I've been wanting to stream a playthrough of S System Shock 2 with the remake oh, of the yeah. first game being released really soon. Because for those who don't know, System Shock 2 is my favorite game of like all, t all time. I love it. I love uh, that it, game. <laughs> it's just, it is very good. And it is creepy, and Shodan is one of my I favorite villains Shodan. ever. I, I love Shodan, Shodan so Shodan. much. I want to hug Shodan, and I want to. I mean, her. don't. But if you want, I'm not going to stop you. She can do whatever but, she wants. But um, but yeah, I'm having trouble getting it to work with OBS because for those who don't know, I'm I'm running it on GOG, which is good old games, which mm. CD Projekt Red made because a lot of their developers were like, we would like to play older games. How do we let everybody else play older hey, games? A lot of which, them are former pirates that would steal stuff to yes, come to their country. Yes. And they found a way to get an emulator running in GOG to run really older stuff. So I've played I've played Phantasmagoria 1 and 2 via it, which, oh my mm. god, those games are hard trip. And that's yeah. how I was able to play System Shock 2. Was I There's an emulator in GOG that allows you to play it, which does not like OBS. It hates OBS. I was trying to get it to run so hard, and it just would not do it. And I was so sad because I don't think I could mod the Steam version of it because I was able to mod the the uh, GOG version of it. And I'm like, oh no, I have to play System Shock 2 without without mods, which is just me screaming because another hacking camera saw me from like five feet away. And it's like announced to every enemy in the area, all the monkeys, as the monkeys just throw fire at you and you scream. Uh, but I want to play System Shock 2 for, for people because the remake's coming out soon and the System Shock 2 Enhanced Edition is coming out soon, which is going to add VR to it, apparently. So you can play System Shock 2 with a Oculus Quest, which is fucking nuts, but sure. Um, other than that, and I want to talk about more System Shock, but I want to keep you guys here for too long because I, I just really love that game a, a lot. Um, uh, still playing Cyberpunk. Please save me from the cyclical hell I'm stuck in. <laughs> <laughs> I just finished all, almost all the side quests, save for uh, carries. I'm still trying to finish those, but I have to wait for the fucker to, to call me because he hasn't just, called me. Just carry um, on. Boo! Shut up! <laughs> God. <laughs> um, I started playing a dating sim in between my uh, work breaks. I'm playing Cafe Enchantray on my Switch. Uh, your grandfather owns a cafe, he dies, you go to collect it, there's a door in the basement, you have a demon boy, you have an angel boy, you have a doula hand boy, which is a headless oh, knight, yeah. he, he has no head, and he has a knight outfit, and he wears like a puffy vest when he's like inhuman, uh, and then there's a demon king, so, so it's different from the other demon, um, and you just basically choose who you want to romance, and then there's this government agent, I would like to romance the government agent but i can't do that in my first playthrough so i'm stuck with one of the boys but uh it's yeah it's a dating sim you make them coffee they like your coffee <laughs> i, I don't know what else I there is to say about it it's so cheesy but i love that trope in dating sims where it's like oh my grandfather passed away and i inherited so do I. Thing. wait why does my grandfather have all these people for me to date yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's wait. like why is this door in the basement why did and why grandpa, is it when i open the door demon boys come out why did your grandpa have all these boys locked in his basement it's a very long story they really like his coffee okay and they just wanted his coffee and they protected his shop from like evil people coming in i'm sure that's gonna come back somewhere in the story wow. But they're like, oh, your grandpa accepted us for who we are as angel, demon, doulahan, other demon. And we're just like, we just wanted really nice coffee. And your character's like, why are you here? Please leave. Like, your character's like, what the fuck is going on? Wow. Grandpa she ends knew up a lot of cat girls. Of them. 
<laughs> with huge <laughs> boobs. She ends up romancing <laughs> one of them. I'm going to go with the headless knight because the headless knight looks like he's a very nice man, even though he doesn't that's, match. That's great. Um, other than does, that, does, uh, he pour the, does he pour the coffee into his neck hole? I, no, apparently he didn't come for the coffee. He came for the atmosphere. Oh, I see. They didn't want to try to explain how he drinks it. <laughs> they didn't want to try to explain the coffee. Got it. They're just Got like, it. he's here for the atmosphere. <laughs> I'll send you guys pictures after this. He's 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 a very nice Doolahan man. He wears like a puffy sweater vest, and he, he yeah, it's it's weird. Um, but uh, other than that, I found out about this new dating sim that I want to pick up though. I, I'll have to play it in Japanese though, called Diabolic Lovers, which is you are the daughter of a priest, like an actual Catholic priest. He sends you to this boarding house. The boarding house is full of hot vampires. Who do BDSM shit with oh, you? Oh yeah, and I'm one like, my, you know, one of my I'm friends interested. really likes that one. I remember. I'm like, you know, I'm interested. It's ninety seven dollars on fucking Amazon, and I'm like, well, <laughs> I wonder if there's any way you could get it somewhere else for cheaper. I just, I can't think of any place. I mean, there's also an anime. Kind of apparently bays, the anime, perhaps a bay. I don't. I just can't think of any places. Maybe some pirates apparently, can help me out with anime, no more information. I don't know. Yeah, apparently the anime sucks because it doesn't go into the, to like any of the like BDSM shit, which you know a lot of a lot of people play that game for that reason. No, they always got it. Wait, can you can you date a hot girl in this game? I don't know. All I know is all the vampires have two endings, good endings and bad endings, and the bad endings always end, end in BDSM stuff. So. Wait a second. Are there gay endings in this game? Maybe That's all I know. I, I saw a I cute, don't know much. I looked it up, and I saw a really cute lady with purple hair. I don't know much. I and just I'm really into her. I just read what people play on these Atobe websites, hmm. so I don't know. But uh, yeah, other than that, I'm just playing WoW still, because that game takes over in my life. But yeah. uh and then Sackboy still co-oping through that. That's fun. Uh, but other than that, uh, I'm going to finish the medium once I finish Cyberpunk. Hopefully this week. I promise sometime this week I will beat Cyberpunk so I'm free. Free from this hell. Free from Keanu Reeves grabbing his crotch in, in my face, which has happened now two times. And I don't know how I feel about it. I think you know exactly how you feel about it. So. I know it was weird because it wasn't even hot. He just was like re- 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 rearranging his digital robo balls in my face. I, <laughs> oh, God. I, I, this is a very normal occurrence. I wouldn't look too deep into it. <laughs> and I was like, thanks, Keanu Reeves. That's fine. I mean, he doesn't hate me anymore, which is cool. He flat out said he doesn't hate me. So we're, we're getting there. Um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, nothing. Sorry to go on tangents about dating sims, but <laughs> people play those games. People like me. You and should play fun, Danganronpa. So. I tried. I didn't like it. Leave me alone. Never. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> and you can't buy that for me either because I own it on Steam. But do you so have no. the Reloaded Edition? No, I'm not going to play them. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, I'm like, not. Please, I it, don't like those games. I don't it, give a shit about those games. It's part dating simulator. And you can not, fall not, in love not, with not, a character. Not, not, and hush, then they get, and then not, they get horribly hush. mutilated oh, in front of your eyes. I will beat you with, 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 with my TV remote. Just keep talking. <laughs> keep you're, talking. You're, stoking, you're stoking the fires of hatred now. I didn't know they made remotes that big anymore. Dude, All the ones you. I always see are really small. It's 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 it's, it's, it's not my the dumb size of the remote, remote. It's how you I use can, like, it. Talk and do oh, it so. I, see. I can I can like talk and do it to not change channels. Because who because who needs who needs buttons when you can I just f- smack people. I fully have enjoyed my the entire time this podcast. I just want to go and thank everyone for being on here, especially uh, Nexus and uh, Robin uh, Nomad for coming on. contribute. I'm doing the heart thing too, but I don't have a camera, so you can't see. <laughs> One uh, day see. Nexus will get a camera. Maybe someday. If <laughs> they you. stop being sold out at Target, maybe I'll get one. Mm. All right. So, any closing statements? They want to shout anything out? Uh, I have more plugs than i would normally have um so let's see let's do least important to most important you can follow me on twitter i've been trying to do more creative writing i have something 
like the longest thing I've written in a bit that uh, I think is pretty cool so far that I'm probably going to upload to Medium soon that you can check out. Um, I'm going to start streaming um, some older Final Fantasy games for my uh, free company because and a lot of people that play 14 don't have that much experience with other Final Fantasy games. Uh, and if the next expansion is going to be kind of based on 4 and 10, I thought maybe I'll stream those ones. And uh, people who haven't seen them can check them out. Uh, so, I mean, you can check my Twitter page for when I go live on those. It'll probably be on Wednesdays. Uh, and then, you know, if you want to get into 14 and you want to join the Ultra server on the Primal Data Center, if you just at me on Twitter, I can get you into our free company. We're super accepting of like new players and new people, uh, and we're all very nice. And lastly, and most important, you should go to ideas.lego.com and go to the blog post about the 90th anniversary final vote, the fan vote, and you should vote for Bionicle so that they can bring Bionicle back for oh, the fuck 90th yeah. anniversary in 2022. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, please go vote. Uh, for Bionicle. If there's anything I can say, it's that you should go do that, and I can't wait for Deep Down. <laughs> nice. Let's see, That's Corey. That's going to get me every week. Every week that is going to get me. <laughs> Let's see, Corey, want to shout Looks anything good. out? Um, just my regular my regular stream schedule. Uh, I, on, uh, I'm on I'm here on Twitch. Um, like clockwork Monday and Tuesday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I also stream on Friday nights at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We have fun doing some creative world building and creative writing at the first about 40 minutes of the stream on Mondays and Tuesdays. And then after we're done with that, we uh, usually hop into like a story based game and uh, have fun with that for the rest of the stream. So hopefully you guys will come and hang out in my kingdom. I would love to have you. So hell yeah. Do you do any AS ASMR on your stream? <laughs> um, occasionally, uh, I use my my suit. I, I I make my my voice an octave deeper, and I I go into ASMR. Whoa. You know, it's like <laughs> welcome uh, welcome to my wow, my lush cool. study. <laughs> <laughs> I use I use keywords like lush and and comfy and soft. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I don't really have anything else to, to announce or anything like that. Um, yeah, stay awesome. I can't wait for Resident Evil 8 for the like the 18th time I've yeah. said that. I literally cannot wait for Resident Evil 8. And yeah. Lady's pretty cool. Wait, before everyone goes, I did post a picture of the Headless Knight in general. Please, I would like All your right, reaction. Let's have a look. <laughs> let's see. Oh. oh, he does look like a nice fella. I like yeah. his mask. I like how nervous the girl looks. She's like, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> that is yeah, all right, then. quite something. Yeah. That uh, is, Sarah. that is, uh, um, I mean, go. yeah, I mean, I'm going to start, I'm going to try to start streaming on Twitch a lot more once I get System Shock 2 working uh my twitch if you can probably see in the chat is a uh, cog shrimp so c-o-g-s-h-r-i-m-p i forgot how to spell shrimp so i had to think about it um i used to stream gears of war so that's why i named myself cog shrimp but i'm just keeping that name because i like it i think it's fun um i'm i'm again i want to start streaming i can't promise i'm going to do it like like week to week because i just get busy and tired and shit changes um uh, i'm working on a secret project that's hopefully going to be up very soon oh, yeah. I, i'm choosing not to i'm choosing not to talk about it because it is something i've been wanting to do forever and i'm very excited about it and i've only told a couple people but this is gonna be big for me so i'm very excited uh secret, that should hopefully secret. i got a secret, 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 secret. <laughs> uh <laughs> that hopefully should be going up soon uh, i just turned in my first draft of it today which whoo i forgot how hard it was to write essay style format shit uh hard but yeah um other than uh, i have a, a my my twitter uh sarah of mars all one single word uh you'll find updates when that goes live there too uh and my blog out here in this open space i promise i have I, I haven't updated in a while i'm so sorry i just haven't done it hopefully i will soon uh nothing else to uh, i don't know uh, do, uh do, hmm. you know i don't know i just kind of blanked <laughs> 
I, I, I was going to say something and then it just kind of just went and now it's gone. And I'm like, you know, I forgot what I was going to say. No so worries. I'm just going to, I'm just going <laughs> to. Anyway, um, yeah, you, you can find my stuff over on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Um, the only real scheduled thing I have for Twitch is this podcast here, which is now scheduled for Sundays at 6.30 p.m. PST. Uh, you can find it later on podcast services as well as YouTube with uh, individually cut up segments on YouTube for easier digestion. Uh, best place to stay up to date with me is on Twitter, where you can see every time I'm announcing or like throwing ideas around, or if you want to see me cry about Bucky getting his haircut. <laughs> and, and you can uh, <laughs> see and read every single pun that he no, makes. No, don't. Yes. There are a lot. There don't, are a lot. Please. Um, oh. I'm currently streaming on a bit of a Resident Evil stream, stream binge. Um, so the next stream I'm probably going to do is going to be on Tuesday. Uh, to finish up Resident Evil 2, we'll jump into 3 after and we'll see where it goes from there. Um, those are typically not scheduled within Twitch, but if you follow me on Twitter, you'll see me throwing the idea around. I'll like pre announce it, whatever. Um, cur- still currently chipping away at my Doom Eternal video essay. The actual essay portion is done. You can view it on my Medium, which the link for that is down in the uh, link tree in the description. Um, very proud of that essay, but a 30 minute uh, audio recording does not equal 30 minutes of work. <laughs> um, if yeah. I was just if I was just slapping <laughs> like a single gameplay clip on top of it, sure. Uh, but this is very <laughs> meticulous cutting yeah, for like on, every single we're point. On here. We yeah, put, uh, we put a little more effort in our gameplay. Yeah, I don't. I don't got my Black Ops Three uh, crash course uh, gameplay going. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that, that's going to be a bit of work. That's very slowly being worked on, but that will be out eventually. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to do it. Thanks everyone for showing up and playing Danganronpa automatically makes you a better person. Wow. Okay. Wow. Um, I didn't say yeah. worse. I said <laughs> playing it will make you a better. Two. You get two. <laughs> Can you, is that loud enough for you, Jose? Does she need to turn it up? <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everyone. Play Dink and Rumpa. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs>